There is an infinite amount of cash at the Federal Reserve. There is an infinite amount of cash at the Federal Reserve. There is an infinite amount of cash at the Federal Reserve. Good morning, Bitcoin. Today is Thursday, July 16th, 2020. My name is Thomas Hunt, and this is the World Crypto Network. The price of Bitcoin is down about 1% in the last 24 hours, with a last of 9,131, a high of 9,245, and a low of 9,026. That's $1 for 10,952. Satoshi's volume for this Thursday was just 2,857 bitcoins changing hands. Bitcoin continues to lean long with 80% heading that way, and Bitcoin dominance has actually declined a little at 63%. Our top story, the new national anthem of the United States by Bill Withers. Lean on me. Lean on me. Sometimes in our lives, we all have pain. We all have sorrow. But if we are wise, we know that there's always tomorrow. Lean on me when you're not strong. And I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on. For it won't be long till I'm going to need somebody to lean on. Please, swallow your pride. If I have things you need to borrow, for no one can fill those of your needs that you won't let show. You just call on me, brother, when you need a hand. We all need somebody to lean on. I just might have a problem that you'll understand. We all need somebody to lean on. Lean on me when you're not strong, and I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on, for it won't be long till I'm going to need somebody to lean on. You just call on me, brother, when you need a hand. We all need somebody to lean on. I just might have a problem that you'll understand. We all need somebody to lean on. If there's a load you have to bear, that you can't carry, I'm right up the road. I'll share your load if you just call me. Call me if you need a friend. Call me, call me, uh-huh. Call me if you need a friend. Call me if you ever need a friend. Just a beautiful song, beautiful lyrics. It's been proposed as the new national anthem. The old national anthem is an English drinking song. Yes, it's not original. The words are original. The tune is not. And uh, it's almost impossible to sing. It's a very difficult song. Uh, maybe that's part of the fun, seeing people screw it up. Uh, but alternatively, I'd like to think of a future where Lean On Me actually does become the anthem. I mean, I also I like Stars and Stripes Forever, uh, Grand Old Flag, uh, Woody Guthrie, This Land Is My Land. There's a lot of great American songs that aren't the American song written by Francis Scott Key, which is hard to sing. But wouldn't it be great if before a baseball game, before a basketball game, and maybe in, in better times when there's not a virus out there and we're actually sitting shoulder to shoulder again, I can, I can see the entire stadium swaying with this song. I can see many people brought to tears, maybe even in a post-virus time people holding hands or putting their arms around each other's shoulders, a true feeling of community, friendship. And I know this goes against everyone who doesn't like the government and thinks that we've gone through all this trouble to make something bad. The social contract, all the philosophy, all the politics, all the founding fathers, all the discussions, all the Athenians, all of that was a mistake. We should have stayed in our own caves and 
killed anything that came near us. And then we would truly be the king of our own cave. Alternatively, if you don't believe that, or if you're willing to, you know, just for a second, think about how other people might think. If we are all interconnected, if there is a butterfly effect of somebody sneezing in a hallway, making everyone sick, or someone wearing a mask and not making people sick, uh, if that's the undeniable reality, right, that we're in a closed loop system, like, yes, we get a little energy from space, there's a little bit of in and out, uh, but mainly we're in a Newtonian closed loop, and not, nothing's coming from the outside, everything's already here, the virus is already here, your desire for food and water is already here, the general abundance of the planet and the success of our technology, uh, that's already here. So it seems to me like, yes, we could use someone to lean on. Especially the key words in the song, I think one of the most important lines is, lean on me when you're not strong, and I'll be your friend. I'll help you carry on. For it won't be long till I'm going to need somebody to lean on. Uh, this idea that one person, one government, one country, one anything uh, could be enough, that it wouldn't need help. The John Galt idea. John Galt built the motor that would change the world, maybe like Elon and his electric motor. Uh, but whereas Elon is sharing his motor with the world and being heavily rewarded with it uh, by money and whatever else he wants, John Galt didn't. John Galt took his motor away from man and hid in a cave. John Galt basically allowed everyone to die. John Galt uh, took the heads of the railroads, the heads of the stock companies, the heads of Reardon Metal. He took them and he had them hide in his cave with him. And then all those companies failed and all those people starved and died. John Galt was a mass murderer like Mao Zedong. Mao Zedong, presumably for the protection of his people, I had them stop everything to chase the sparrows. The sparrows were such a threat to the people of China, they were eating the crops. But they stopped watering and tending the crops so that they could bang pots and pans together, running around, keeping the sparrows from landing, causing them to have heart attacks in midair and drop from the sky. But no one tended to the crops. It's all connected. All the factory farms all the truck drivers, all the food, all the water, and all the air. It's all connected. Maybe we forget that sometimes. Maybe viruses come along to remind us of that. So, housekeeping. Where have I been? What have I been doing? Well, after the president's amazing speech on July 3rd before Mount Rushmore, uh, when he later set off fireworks, uh, irregardless of the many, many times that those fireworks had caused fires in that area in the past. Yes, fireworks cause fires. He also talked about the end of history. He talked about the founding fathers, and he talked about uh, hagiobiography or uh, historic biography, hero, hero worship, the worship of heroes. And... Uh, it completely brought me back to first or second grade when they were teaching us about the founding fathers. And George Washington had wooden teeth, chopped down a cherry tree, would never tell a lie. It's very strange. Doesn't seem true. Uh, but in his speech, the president told us that we should not examine history. And we should not try to understand George Washington at any deeper level other than that he was a founding father. He had a sweet wig. And he did what he wanted. And the same for trying to understand someone like Thomas Jefferson, uh, who owned so many slaves, who built beautiful architecture uh, on the back of his slaves, right? I mean, it took, uh, you, can, you can read about it. I mean, he couldn't complete the West Wing. He didn't have enough servants. He couldn't complete the East Wing. He didn't have enough servants. He eventually had teams of servants working on his, uh, his uh, not a plantation, but whatever it is, at uh, Monticello, uh, his magnificent house. Which again, built with slaves. But we can't think about that anymore. So I found that distressing. I also wasn't crazy about this Newsweek article, how Trump could lose the election and still remain president. It's a detailed article with a step-by-step -step plan. 
Mainly, if uh, Biden wins the popular vote and carries the swing states, you declare that the voting was rigged, that there was mail-in ballot fraud, and the Chinese were behind a plan to provide fraudulent mail-in ballots and other election hacking throughout the four swing states that gave Biden his victory. Uh, Having rallied against the Chinese throughout the campaign, calling Biden soft on China, uh, Trump would deliver his narrative claiming that the Chinese have interfered in the U.S. election. Because it's a major national security issue, he invokes emergency powers, asking the the Justice Department to investigate the swing states. The investigation ticks down towards December 14th. All four swing states have Republican control of their upper and lower houses of their state legislators. They refuse to allow the Electoral College slate to be certified until the national security investigation has completed. Democrats fight back, but we continue. The issue goes to the Supreme Court, and the election is not decided. The Supreme Court says that if the Electoral College slate cannot be certified by December 14th, The Electoral College must meet anyway and cast its votes. The Electoral College meets, and without the electors from those four states, neither Biden nor Trump has sufficient votes to get an Electoral College majority. The election is thrown into the House of Representatives. Under the constitutional process, the vote in the House is not by individual members, but by state delegation. I see where it's going here, where each delegation casts one vote, which is determined by the majority of representatives in that state. Currently, there's 26 states that have a majority Republican House delegation. 23 states have majority Democratic delegation. Of course, this ignores the difference in populations between the states, as all state politics does. The Republicans would win 26 to 24, allowing Trump to lose the election and retain the presidency. So I thought this was important. I thought this was worth thinking about for a while and maybe just laying out. So I ignored the news for about a week. It was pretty amazing. Uh, My previous attempts to ignore the news have gone badly always. (laughs) Usually uh, within the first eight hours, I've figured out uh, that even though I deleted the Twitter app, I can still access it through my handy Safari web browser, Uh, which can't be deleted uh, on my phone. Uh, So I deleted Twitter. I deleted Google News. uh, I just intended not to look. And uh, I was really successful for about 7 to 10 days, uh, which is a really long time if you're kind of a news junkie and you kind of need that new information. Uh, I would just go around, and and obviously I didn't see anybody, but if I'd seen anybody, I'd say, hey, I don't know anything about the news. (laughs) You could tell me we landed on Mars and I wouldn't know. Uh, Strangely enough, information about the Supreme Court decisions did uh, sneak through my barrier. Uh, Every once in a while, I'd see a YouTube video recommended for me, and if it was about the Supreme Court, I I couldn't turn it down. I had to know what they were up to. Uh, So that was fun, Uh, and it really does take you out of it. If you you ignore the news, you forget about the coronavirus, and you forget about the pandemic, and you forget about all the people dying needlessly— uh, but then the problem is, is that ignoring the news doesn't make it go away, right? I, I came back and uh, you know, I flipped on the TV or whatever. The MSNBC came up and the death tolls and the infection totals uh, were just incredible. And I felt uh, you know, Rip Van Winkle. I'd only been gone a week, but what? All of this happened already? You changed everything? And uh, unfortunately, it didn't change for the better, right? The... Uh, and they, they used all the excuses. They're like, oh, it's only the infection rate now. It's, the hospitalization rate hasn't gone up yet. And then a few days later, oh, the hospitalization rate went up, but the death rate hasn't gone up yet. And then a few days later, oh, the death rate went up too. So I don't know what to do. I, I can't tell you to ignore the news uh, because basically if you ignore the news, you'll forget about it and you'll start doing stupid things like going outside and meeting with people, and stuff like that, and then pretty soon you'll have to quarantine in your own house, and you won't be allowed to go anywhere, and you'll think that a trip to the living room is uh, exotic, 
And when you go outside, you'll think, wow, the sky really looks blue after a few days in solitary confinement. So uh, you got to keep your hand in the news. you got to keep your eye on it. But I don't know how to deal with the psychic toll of watching all these people get infected for nothing. Uh, the, the realities of a place like Georgia, uh, where I'm, I'm going to read the headline. We're going to try to go through the news here and everything. And we're going to talk about Bitcoin, too, and the incredible hacks of yesterday. Uh, although, as, as you know, if you have followed this show, we talk about Bitcoin and hacks about every other week on the Bitcoin group. It's a pretty popular thing that happens. But this was a particularly large hack. But to think about Georgia, it's just a particularly sad case because uh, Governor Kemp used to be the Secretary of State there. Um, many people believe that he rigged the election so that Stacey Abrams, Democrat, would not win. Uh, it would have been an amazing thing for a Democrat to become governor of a red state like Florida. Uh, but because of this rigged election, because of this very close election, et cetera, et cetera, uh, Kemp is now governor. And it's truly amazing. You read the headline, and maybe I'm you know, thinking with too much of like a European mind or an international mind here. I, haven't, I don't have my United States hat on. But to read a headline that says he's banned requiring masks, Not that he's requiring masks. Not that he's banned the not wearing of masks. But he's banned the requiring of masks. And I know a lot of you get triggered about requirements and things that we have to do for other people and things we have to do as a society and things that are, you know, good for everybody, um, but required. But still, I mean, you understand for a business, if if a business has a mask requirement brought down to them by the state of Georgia... They have to change the way they do business, right? They have to require masks. If they have a masks are strongly recommended come down to them from the state of Georgia, they don't have to do shit, right? So that's the difference. Yeah, sure, normal people. Normal people should judge the risk, read about the virus for 10 minutes and wear a fucking mask. I mean, that's all you have to say. Uh, But businesses operate differently from normal people. Businesses have to generally operate on the code of the government and the the area, the jurisdiction that they live in. Uh, So if you're a business, say, in Texas, uh, you're now requiring masks. If you don't require masks, there will be legal consequences, right? They'll come back for you later. Now in Georgia, where they should also just be straight up requiring masks, like how how did the Asian countries beat this thing? It's no secret. They just wear masks. Uh, They wear them for a lot of reasons. Uh, The Japanese think it's polite not to make other people sick. Uh, When you have even the slightest sniffle uh, as a culture, they'll put on masks not to make people sick. Uh, Our culture, recently, if you wore a mask into a store, they might pull a gun on you. Uh, So we had to change that right quick, and that took a lot of thought. Uh, But then the other idea is, I don't know that it bothers people that the masks protect others and they don't protect themselves. Uh, I think it just bothers people that they're being required to do anything at all. Uh, Which we've talked about before, the end of civics education in the 1950s. Uh, Civics is how you interact with your society. If you have a society like this republic or like the Athenian democracy, uh, it depends upon participation. It depends upon an informed and engaged and active populace, right? And that's why you have the civics classes. You say, hey... uh, You don't like something about the government, you should run for office and change it. You should volunteer. You should join a campaign. You should be an involved member of your community. Uh, You shouldn't just look the other way. Uh, Say, example, in uh, Bristol, Bristol, uh, England, the United Kingdom, uh, where they have a slaver statue up in the square for 125 years. That's fine. And they put up a, a protester statue in replacement. Protester statue lasts 25 hours. 125 years, 25 hours. Do you think that's wrong, even in the United Kingdom, which is still kind of a democracy? Uh, You should run for office. You should get involved. You should make speeches. You should engage with your neighbors, right? Maybe some of them agree. Maybe some of them don't want a statue of a slaver in their community. They just never asked, never thought about it. But that's what an engaged and informed and active democracy is. And it's not about the 
It's not about the people overturning the science or overturning the experts, although they, they seem to be trying to do that. But it's about this idea that we've entered into a social contract. And I know the contract was signed before you got here. and You reject the social contract and you want to go back to your cave. Well, don't take your iPhone with you. Don't take anything that was made by the work of a group with you, uh, which is everything, right? John Galt goes back to the cave by himself, right? He just sits there, does nothing. Imagine if Elon Musk had decided to go back to a cave by himself. I've seen a lot of fun debate on Twitter lately uh, decrying Mark Zuckerberg for what he built with Facebook and celebrating Tom from MySpace uh, for just taking the $500 million and, I don't know, going to a beach somewhere. Who knows where Tom from MySpace is, right? In the same way, uh, Elon Musk could have just taken the PayPal money. All the PayPal guys could have. I don't know if you guys are familiar, but there's this, this thing they call it the PayPal Mafia. And that's a terrible name. But uh, essentially, people who worked, early early workers at PayPal started, well, PayPal, of course, SpaceX, Tesla, Solar City, the, the Elon Musk ones. Uh, but obviously, Reed Hoffman started LinkedIn, uh, as much as you might not like the emails. It's allegedly a useful social network for business people. Uh, the YouTube guys uh, worked at, at PayPal. Uh, and there's dozens of other examples that I, I don't remember right now. But uh, they went out there and further furthered entrepreneurship. They created new businesses because they wanted to. They didn't have to. So it is interesting to see that and make those comparisons. Uh, in the same way that they could have just stayed home, but instead created new businesses, uh, you could not wear a mask and infect everyone or you could wear a mask and not infect people. And it, it's strange to see so many people argue against that. And, and I suppose mainly it's just this voluntary thing. They don't want to do anything that's non-voluntary, maybe. Or maybe they don't have enough information about the coronavirus, although I think there's lots of information out there. I don't know why they're arguing so strongly against the masks. I know that perhaps uh, their leader read, led them down this path. Uh, but we've seen even recently that the leader is wearing a mask now. Uh, even Mitch McConnell, the worst person in the world, is wearing a mask. Uh, obviously, his election chances are in danger. But, uh, yep, ignoring the, ignoring the news won't work. We're all interconnected, and you should wear a mask. All right, let's try to look at some of the news. Disturbing memo reveals Trump USPS chief has slowed mail delivery amid calls to expand voting by mail. And it's really simple. What he did here is he cut off uh, overtime for the postal workers. Uh, you could do the same thing for police officers and save a whole bunch of money. Uh, but obviously no one's going to be guarding the city. No one's going to be doing their job. Overtime uh, is a vital thing uh, for a lot of jobs. And it's the difference between delivering the mail or uh, having people sit around and not deliver the mail. Unfortunately, delivering the mail has become a political issue uh, with the president appointing one of his cronies to attempt to destroy the post office uh, so that we can't use it for vote by mail. It's amazing. Uh, something that's existed since the Pony Express and something that uh, you may or may not know, is another one of these programs designed to help people that live in rural or low population areas. Uh, corporations know it's not worth it to deliver to these people, right? It's too expensive. But the post office, because it's not really a corporation, it's not really owned by the government, it's kind of in the middle, uh, serves these people because that's their, their charter, right? That's their duty, is to bring mail to everyone. Uh, which originally was an amazing thing. It brought you uh, information from your relatives and your loved ones. Maybe your son went off to join the army and he writes you letters back through the mail. And even though you live on a farm in the middle of nowhere, uh, the post office goes the extra mile to bring that letter to you. Uh, later on, the mail brought you contracts and news and information and lawsuits and good things, bad things, junk mail, all kinds of things, right? The mail's pretty amazing. Uh, and that's to say nothing about Amazon and the ability of the mail to bring you packages. 
Uh, sometimes even life-saving medications uh, can be delivered anywhere in the United States for a reasonable cost thanks to the mail service. So, but they're destroying that too. Here's the headline. GOP Governor Brian Kemp is banning Georgia's cities and counties from ordering people to wear masks in public places, even as a growing number of other states are mandating masks. Trump has been in, er, Kemp, sorry, has been instead trying to encourage voluntary mask wearing. And it's just not going to work. It's not the same thing. I mean, if this was, I don't even know the right situation where voluntary is okay. I mean, putting on your seatbelt's not really voluntary. Wearing a life pres preserver is not really voluntary. But as you can see, either of these things would save lives. Uh, so he's just saying that saving lives is not important. It's not a requirement. And uh, it, it doesn't make any sense if he knows anything about the coronavirus, right? I mean, looking at this picture right here, uh, the guy in front is uh, the governor. He's at threat of uh, giving the virus uh, to the military man behind him. Uh, the military man's wearing a mask, so he can't transmit the virus to the governor. Uh, this is why the mask wearing thing is really all or nothing. Uh, thinking about Disneyland, thinking about the airplane with Ted Cruz on it where he takes his mask off. Uh, it really is, we're interconnected in a way that science and other people have always told us and people have been able to ignore and create up false imaginary things instead and all kinds of stuff. But uh, the reality of the molecules and the particles between my mouth on an airplane and Ted Cruz's mouth on an airplane uh, means that if he takes his mask off, we're all sharing his germs, right? We're all sharing his particles. There is no space uh, between us, especially on an airplane where the air is recycled and the molecules go up in the air and there's filters and maybe the filters are good, but still the best filter and the simplest and easiest and cheapest filter is for Ted Cruz or the military man or the president or anybody uh, to just put the mask on your face directly. Uh, but it's all or nothing. Ted Cruz takes it off. We're all sharing his, his germs. Uh, the one guy at the Chinese food restaurant uh, infected everyone there. One, one person. Uh, you know, he gets up to get a fork. He goes to the restroom. He touches the doorknob. He coughs. It goes into the air. It goes into the air conditioning system. It goes everywhere, right? Unless you wear a mask. The really serious scientists say we could get this thing wrapped up in four to six weeks if we had 100% mask wearing. And, and I'm talking about all these, all these times where everyone's like, oh, you can take your mask off there. If we just wore them there too, if we're like, wear them alone in the car, wear them when you go outside, because you can't see the virus. You don't know. You're like, oh, I don't think there's virus here. There could be. Even this idea of six foot separation. Uh, it's got to be built on an average, right? That means sometimes it works shorter, like three feet. Sometimes it works longer at nine feet. I mean, there could be some epic, amazing sneeze that goes further than anyone. And because you weren't wearing your mask, you get the disease anyway. So uh, it just seems if we really wanted to defeat this thing, if we really wanted to end it, and again, there's arguments against ending it. Uh, every other country in the world uh, that's worn masks and locked down longer than us uh, is back, right? They're producing widgets, right? The United States is not producing any widgets. Uh, so if you didn't like the United States, maybe you would ban cities from requiring masks uh, because you want people to get sicker so they can't produce any widgets so you could get an economic advantage on the United States. Uh, it's horrible. I mean, it's horrible to think that someone would purposely amplify a pandemic to gain temporary economic advantage over a rival. That's horrible. But again, it's, it's not like, you know, someone hasn't been poisoning people with radiation and murdering his critics and invading his neighbors. Is it that big of a stretch? I mean, what do we really know about Governor Brian Kemp? For all we know, he has some debts. He owes someone money. Did something bad in a place one time. Maybe that's why he's 
banning Georgia's cities and counties from ordering people to wear masks in public places. And again, this should just be in reinforced. This doesn't make any sense when I try to read it out loud. Banning the cities and counties from ordering people to wear masks in public. All right. Unbelievable. And uh, maybe, you know, these people are, are a part of it and they, they just want to die. And we're just going to have to sit here with our science goggles on, uh, never, ever going outside, really. Sorry, until there's a vaccine, which I've said from the beginning. Uh, people got all mad, I said from the beginning. I was like, yeah, you know, stock, stock up now. A <laughs> good time to get some books or some new video games or movies or VR or whatever you're into because uh, we're going to be at home a long time. And uh, just looking out at this crowd, they're not wearing masks. They're shoulder to shoulder, and they're not wearing masks. It looks like a Petri disc. If I was, if I was a scientist and I wanted to spread the virus, I would say let's do something like this. Uh, but let's listen to just a little bit from a city council meeting in Provo, Utah, uh, where they want to reopen the schools, and these people were there protesting. Let's see what he says. Here. Hello, everyone. This is going to be this is going to be brief, I think. Um, this is the exact opposite of what we need to be doing. Absolutely. We are supposed to be physically distancing, wearing masks. And so all of our medical all of our medical See now it's not a political thing he said. He said the exact guidance by scientists. We should be physically distancing. And we're we and wearing masks, and they boo him like children. I mean, it gets really dark at this point. Like, what can science do? Even if we get the vaccine, which again is going to be another one of these arguments about whether or not you want to have the vaccine. But we all know if seventy percent of them don't get the vaccine, we're not going to develop herd immunity, which means the coronavirus comes back every year like the flu, like a killer flu like a killer flu that we chose to have rather than getting a shot. And I don't like shots. I don't want a shot or a scratch test or whatever they're going to do to this thing. I heard some really neat things early on that they would put this kind of Velcro sticky thing on you and it would stick you like a hundred times and that the, it was a contact uh, and it would apply the vaccine or the whatever through the, the contact of the sticky thing. That sounds really cool. Science is amazing, right? These people are cheering and booing because they don't want to wear masks. They basically like, they're like, I want the right to spread the virus to my neighbor. That's, that's no one's, that's within no one's right. It's like, I want the right to murder random people on the street. I don't know. I shouldn't have that right. No one should have that right. Even if it's by accident, you know, my car just shoots bullets. <laughs> I don't know. I put some guns on there. I rigged them up and it just randomly shoots bullets when I drive around and kills people. But I need to drive around for work. You can't just drive, randomly drive around, kill people, right? And in, in, in any other society, I mean, maybe in a video game. But again, let's listen to a little more of them booing. It, and it's, again, it's like a, it's become a paternal thing where the the father is telling you, "Hey, wear your mask, be protected, put a condom on," you know. And they're like, "Boo, boo, condoms, boo, responsibility. I want to be a child forever and just infect people and die." Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Medical experts, our Department of Health, everyone is encouraging us to do that. This room is not complying with these health guidelines. This creates a health concern for this meeting. So um, I'm going to suspend the rules, and I'm going to make a motion to continue this entire meeting to another date. Okay. Do we need to say the specific date? And again, they knew what was going to happen. Uh, there's a virus out there, and you just packed a room full of people not wearing masks. Even wearing masks, you're too close together, and you just packed the room. What do you think was going to happen? If you really wanted to have a meeting and discuss this, you could have social distanced and worn masks. And you could have said through the mask how upset you were and how this was... Uh, limiting your ability to spread the virus to other people. And that upset you. That took away your virus rights. I have my virus rights to spread as much virus as I can. There are no consequences for my actions. Surely things are not interconnected. 
It's not a zero-sum game where if I take something from you, you no longer have it. Surely not. I've never seen an example of that before. And again, this is going to piss off the libertarians, but what are we going to do? They're like 0.00001%. We don't rely on people to voluntarily wear seatbelts, not text, or observe speed limits while driving. We, as a society, require and enforce compliance. When public safety is at stake, we do not rely on voluntary behavior. Kemp is irresponsible or an idiot or both. And you might not agree uh, with these things, but it is very clear that we don't rely on people to voluntarily wear seatbelts. And, and again, like I'm saying, because of the business implications. Let's say that seatbelts were voluntary. Well, now I own a trucking company and I don't have to require my truckers to wear seatbelts. And when the truckers get in accidents and get killed, uh, instead of just putting them in a hospital for a little while, uh, I have to go get a brand new trucker. I have to train a new person to do this job. Uh, so it's actually better for me as a business owner to have something like safety requirements be enforced by the government so that then I can just rely on them and have less dead drivers, right? It's just right there. And now a short message from Chris Cuomo, uh, CNN, uh, talking about uh, the president's and the, his daughter's advertisements uh, for Goya brand canned beans the other day. It seemed very strange. And again, this is another one where uh, I, hope you can, I hope you can look beyond yourself here. I hope that you can understand that uh, President Obama never put a product down on the Resolute desk and took a picture of himself smiling and thumbs up saying, this is a great product. Just, just never, right? His wife, his daughters, his family, none of his people held up a can of beans and said, hey, buy this, right? Just never. Eight years, never. Clinton, never. I'm going to even go W. Bush, never. Not a fan. Never did it. Clinton before that, never did it. Uh, H.W. Bush, never did it. Reagan never did it. Carter never did it. Nixon never did it. Nixon's family never got out there and said, hey, you can get some nice raincoats here. Just never. Never did it. So it's not left. It's not right. You have to look past that. You have to try to understand. Uh, these are norms being broken. These people care about nothing, Lebowski. Nothing. You tell me how a president in the middle of a pandemic has got time for this bullshit. Are you kidding me? Hawking products, I don't care who it is. Resolute desk. This is what he's resolute about. Pandemic priorities. His daughter, Ivanka, top White House advisor. Are you kidding me? Marketing for a brand following calls for boycotts after Goya's CEO heaped praise on Trump last week. On your dime, in the middle of a pandemic, they're selling beans? Are you, are you kidding me? Seriously. Seriously. This is not left and right. This is reasonable, my brothers and sisters. The guy's sitting on the Resolute desk with a bunch of Goya products. You tell me how a president in the middle of a pandemic has got time for this bullshit. Are you kidding me? Hawking products? I don't care who it is. Truly is bullshit. And another update. Remember Trump's rally in Tulsa that we told you not to go to and everyone talked about all the scientists. It's going to be a super spreader event. Well, the governor of Oklahoma went to the rally. And he didn't wear a mask. And the governor of Oklahoma, Kevin Stitt, has just tested positive for the coronavirus as cases in his state hit record levels just a month after he hosted Trump's first campaign rally amid the pandemic. So the governor 
of Oklahoma has joined, what's his name, the pizza guy, 999. He was there too. He ran for president. Anyway, a lot of people at that rally got infected and sick. And we knew about it. You knew about it. The experts knew about it. I knew about it. We all said it was a mistake, but it just keeps happening. So uh, I don't know how to steal you uh, for what's going to happen in the future. We've already passed uh, 130,000 dead in the United States, uh, 3.25 million infected. Uh, I remember when it was almost nothing. I remember when he said, uh, it's going to be 15 people and it's going to go away. It's going to go away when it gets hot. Uh, all of this stuff. Uh, clearly, even the most basic optimistic predictions are now gone. Uh, so the only way I can tell you to prepare for it is to you know watch the news just a little bit at least to keep updated and stay inside, wear a mask, never go anywhere, order your food and delivery, do some deficit spending, whatever you got to do. Because uh, this thing's real and it's getting worse. And uh, clearly we're not going to reach an, a larger audience here. <laughs> we're not as much as I, I thought like, oh, I've got a platform. I can I can help people. I can spread the right science and I can overcome the, the disagreements and the political partisan things or whatever. But uh, no, nobody has that kind of platform. Nobody's listening anymore. Uh, so all we're going to do is watch all these people die. So... We're going to have the science. We're going to have the better information. Uh, we're going to have the option of staying home and wearing a mask. Uh, but we're not going to do any of those things. People are just going to die. So I don't know how to make you strong to watch that, but I think uh, listening to Lean On Me a few times will do it. And singing along might help. Uh, and then just uh, like this line it says right here at the beginning. Sometimes in our lives, we all have pain. We all have sorrow. But if we are wise, we know that there's always tomorrow. So that's something to hang on for. Now let's talk about the Bitcoin news. Oh, we should have started here. It would have been so much easier. But we talk about these scams all the time. Uh, you guys saw it. It was all over Twitter yesterday. Barack Obama, Joe Biden, Elon Musk, Apple, and others hacked in unprecedented Twitter attack. Yes, uh, it seems now... Uh, that it was likely an inside job. Uh, Twitter has a moderation tool, which we're seeing screenshots uh, that are leaking of it. Uh, has all kinds of interesting buttons, including a possible confirmation of everybody's favorite internet story, the shadow ban. Yes, there's some, some shadow ban buttons in there. There's some shadow ban trends. There's blacklist buttons. And uh, shockingly enough, in their administration tool, it appears... Uh, that Twitter has included the ability for an administrator to tweet using someone else's account. Uh, there's no reason to include this ability, right? Uh, what's the occasion? Well, let's say someone had passed away and you needed to put a message on their account. Oh, well, that's a nice thing, but that's not something that Twitter does. They just let the accounts go. Uh, they probably wouldn't even, it would be very difficult to even just get a password to a dead person's account. But uh, so that would be a reason. Otherwise, I mean, maintenance, you could say, hey, this account's down for maintenance or some kind of thing. It's very difficult to understand a reason where Twitter would want to say, become the president and then tweet something out of his mouth, right? If Twitter was going to do that, maybe they'd say, buy Twitter stock, <laughs> you know, help us out a little bit. Uh, but no, so they had a bad administration tool. They had a bad employee. Uh, leaks are starting to happen. They're saying that the hackers may have worked with the bad employee. They may have bribed him or convinced him or whatever. The main other thing to say here is that certainly the hackers could have gotten tons more. They could have done much more with this hack than they did. Uh, all of the messages were very similar and generic, and they asked you to go to like crypto health dot something and give them money. Uh, later on, they gave up on that, started directly putting the Bitcoin address into the messages. Uh, they could have done so much more, as many have theorized. Uh, you could have taken Elon Musk's account and bought a bunch of Tesla and shorted it. And then you could have said, Elon Musk, I'm resigning. I'm quitting Tesla. It's a bad company. I don't like it anymore. It's gone wrong. Uh, Tesla stock would have went down incredibly, right? 
Uh, and while it is possible they could have uh, had a paper trail to your shorts, things like that, uh, does expose you. Uh, still, that's easy money. They could have taken over the president's account. They could have threatened other countries and started a war. Then uh, they could have you know, had money on both sides of that. That could have been easy money. They could have gotten paid by the people that wanted the war started. Uh, there's lots they could have done with this. And it's, uh, again, horrifying to see how weak Twitter is. Uh, it's a long time ago now, but uh, I, was a party in, I was at a party in San Francisco once, and I talked to these guys who were working from, for Facebook uh, back in the early days of Facebook. And I, I told them that, you know, I'd, I'd been a sysadmin, and I know that the first thing all the sysadmins do is read the, read the emails, read the private messages, stalk their ex-girlfriend, whatever it is, all those things. That's, that's what everyone does when they're given any kind of power. They start uh, looking up Jennifer Aniston's emails, seeing if she has any hidden pictures. I mean, these kind of things. Uh, it's happened time and time again. And that's why you really uh, you can't, at a, at a core, it's unsafe to have these centralized systems. It's just core unsafe. Uh, but even if you do, you need to have so many layers of access control and monitoring and logs. Uh, they should be able to know instantly who did this, whose account did this. Uh, there shouldn't be any group accounts or any ways to just hide it and say, oh, it wasn't me, it was Jim. Oh, it was not Jim, it was Mike. So again, these centralized things, these Facebook things, these Twitter things, that's not how the Internet's supposed to work. Imagine if instead of having Twitter... We had just had a shared message protocol and everyone could send short messages and multiple people could build clients and the data was all stored in a trusted third party, but no one else. Uh, the company that runs the tool doesn't have to own the data. Uh, these ideas were all out there, uh, but Twitter and Facebook had more money. They had more advertisers. They bought more programmers. They got there faster. Uh, the open source, the internet community... Uh, they could never build something as slick and as easy to use as Facebook and Twitter and these other things. And then once the monopoly got in there, then they had the uh, network effect, right? And that's really hard to overcome. Uh, why would I join another photo sharing service when all my friends are on the Facebook photo sharing service? Why would I join another short message sharing service when all the big names are on Twitter? So uh, we don't build things right the first time. <laughs> we could, uh, but we don't. Uh, what we do is we build them till they're a big mess, and then maybe then we try to fix them, or Facebook will put in a few minor fixes, Twitter will put in a few minor fixes, and everyone will pretend that it's fine, and we'll move along until our centralized servers are hacked again from the inside by a trusted source, which is impossible to defend against. Someone has to, someone has to moderate your data. Someone has to run your databases. Just can't trust everybody. And yes, what a waste. The hackers could have gotten so much more. Look how pathetic this message is, uh, especially when they put this out under Jeff Bezos' account. And it was like, Jeff Bezos wants to give back to his community. <laughs> I know, it's hilarious. Uh, but yeah, look at just this dog shit message. It doesn't even link to like a, a Bitcoin site or a blockchain.info or something. Uh, it's just a dirty address. And of course, Twitter's going to ban, you know, addresses things that are of this length, that kind of thing. Uh, so that's going to be annoying. Stuff like that's definitely going to happen, but it won't, it won't stop this. And Twitter's Bitcoin scam hack, I don't know about all those words, wiped $1 billion from its market value. They say Facebook lost way more after its 2018 breach, but then again, it might not be over yet. Uh, there's still a chance people are still learning about this. Uh, I just read that someone sent four Bitcoins uh, to the hacker's address. Uh, they said there's now 11 Bitcoins in there. Remember, some of this might be the hackers uh, seeding their own address. Uh, that would be a good idea. You want people to seem like there's some money in there. Uh, but again, to have four more sent uh, means that maybe there's somebody uh, who didn't hear about this. So it's still going on. Uh, also, the media is having a great time running Bitcoins. Good name through the mud saying all of this is a Bitcoin scam and a Bitcoin this. And uh, other people are saying that, yes, it's Bitcoin's fault because Bitcoin provides a uh, one-way money, uh, just in the way that email is one way and you can't cancel your email. Uh, you can't cancel a Bitcoin transaction once it's been sent. Uh, that's why it's useful for hackers and uh, anyone who does work, <laughs> anyone who does freelance work. I make you a graphic. I, you, know, you send me the 10 bucks. I send you the graphic. Our transaction is over. That's it. 
Uh, but yes, they're running the Bitcoin name through it. All of them say Bitcoin scam. This is a Twitter scam. This is Twitter's fault. Twitter was hacked, not Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin just sat there and, and did its normal thing. I also saw people talking about malware and how Bitcoin is the malware dream and all that. But you just have to be a little older and you can remember back to the old days when ransomware would lock down your computer and then give you an address where they wanted you to send the money. Yes, yeah, so a physical, real-world snail mail address. Uh, you could send them money, uh, money orders maybe, cash, I don't know. And uh, then they would take the money and give you back your computer. So that happened in the 90s. Let's not forget. Let's not forget. And, of course, this is the only thing in Bitcoin news today. Everybody's writing about it. Uh, it won't be easy to hide the Bitcoin stolen through Twitter. That's true. Bitcoin price must now reclaim 9400 quick to stop the bears. Interesting. What was also great about this hack is historically that one of the solutions Twitter used that Facebook's been unwilling to use is they shut down the ability of their verified users to post. Uh, the main problem here is that the verified users, again, puts Twitter into the we control our platform camp, right? And if you control your platform and you just allowed a verified user like Bill Gates uh, to send out a scam and a bunch of people get scammed and then they hate Bill Gates because he scammed them, uh, it's Twitter, you have just destroyed Bill Gates' good reputation, right? He has the right to sue you now uh, because you are not what Facebook is still claiming to be, this platform, this open platform where... Things just happen on the platform. Whoops, you know, bunch of hate speech. Woo! So it is interesting to see Twitter's response different than uh, Facebook's response. They stopped these people from posting. There was a few hours there where no blue check marks could post, and everybody else, all the normal users like myself and everyone, uh, were all commenting on this and having a great time uh, in our own private walled garden, kept away uh, from all of these big names most of who usually just use their Twitter for marketing anyway. But uh, that was interesting. Facebook, no matter what's happening, has not shut down posting yet. And don't go away, but there's more news. Uh, first, check out the World Crypto Network store at worldcryptonetwork.store. Uh, we've got the World Crypto Network dual logo mug, limited edition with the old and new logos. We've got the Trezors Don't Float shirt. Uh, which I can confirm comes in black, which is a big deal. Apparently, people only buy black T-shirts. I didn't know this. Uh, Bitcoin Not Bombs, the Bitcoin Havening 2020 Special Edition, designed by Davi Barker, comes in traditional Bitcoin Not Bombs orange, but you can also get it in black. The World Crypto Network shirt is mainly black already, so got to figure out what I'm going to do uh, to that graphic. Maybe put an outline around it or put it in a white box. Something like that, so I can offer a black T-shirt there, too, because apparently people only buy black T-shirts. But uh, uh, you can get these all for the low, low price of 20 bucks a shirt at worldcryptonetwork.store. Check out the World Crypto Network audio podcast on worldcryptonetwork.com. Uh, there's a link there to Apple. It's on iTunes, Spotify, all kinds of places where podcasts are heard. And uh, hopefully I'll update it soon. Uh, we've been running some shortened versions of stuff. Um, maybe we'll bring those up on there too. Uh, you can listen to the audio on there as well. Checking out the price of Bitcoin. It continues to be down just a little bit. Uh, price of Bitcoin is down about 1% in the last 24 hours with a last of 9,135, a high of 9,245, and a low of $9,026. And now... More news, if we can handle it. I don't know. Uh, shout out to Jack on Twitter. Uh, we were having a good time uh, before all this stuff happened. And Jack was sharing new pictures of the number 43 NASCAR, uh, which is going to be driven by Bubba Wallace. It's branded after Cash App uh, with lots of Cash App green. But you can see right here they included uh, kind of a Bitcoin logo, the one Cash App's been using. Uh, in the corner of the car in a couple places. So that's pretty cool. Dogecoin had their own car, and it was completely Doge. Uh, but very cool that Cash App's done this. 
Uh, the Dogecoin car was only for one race. Uh, I imagine this is for an entire season, something like that. So a very big sponsorship uh, that also includes Bitcoin. Uh, of course, unlike BitPay, <laughs> they didn't just name the whole event after Bitcoin. They're still uh, trying to get some support for Cash App here. The classic BitPay. Uh, Bitcoin Bowl uh, was not directly branded on BitPay. They, they'd hoped that the whole community would join them, and they didn't. So they took the hit on that one. Uh, Rush Limbaugh. Uh, in six, month, ru six months, Rush Limbaugh went from saying, it's a hoax by Democrats to make Trump look bad, to saying, we're going to have to eat our dead family members in order to survive the winter. Uh, yes, he referenced the Donner Party, said Americans should adapt to the coronavirus like the pioneers had to turn to cannibalism. A stunning statement from the ailing Limbaugh uh, reminded me of the insane rantings of Alex Jones from just a couple of weeks ago, uh, where Alex Jones said multiple times over and over again, repeating it, yelling and screaming, uh, I will eat you. I will eat your family. Uh, my children will not starve because we will eat you. Strange how it comes to this. Either you believe we're all connected and we're in a community and we should help each other, or you believe that you should eat people when you're hungry. That's a, it's quite a dichotomy. I would think about that, where I wanted to be on that level. Trump had a press conference in the Rose Garden, said it was about China, uh, the press showed up to cover it and ask him questions, but instead he talked for about an hour about Joe Biden uh, just trying to spread a bunch of lies and having a good old-fashioned campaign speech uh, in the people's house, on the people's grounds, as no one has ever done before. It's actually an ethics violation, just like the Goya beans thing. And, and it's another one where left or right, you should keep the house clean, right? You should keep the politics out of the people's house. Keep the, don't, you know, make speeches underneath the people's statues and things like that. Like, just, you know, put up some flags somewhere and make a speech. But, nope, he tricked the press into coming, and the press should have gotten up and leave, left, uh, but they sat there, they were stopped. Even Brett Baer uh, from Fox News uh, knows that this is bad, and again, tries to get you to understand it uh, by using that age-old example of what if this was Obama? What if the shoe was on the other foot? How would you feel then? Let's listen a little bit to Brett Beer from Fox News. He spoke for 52 minutes before taking a question. Presidents in the past, by tradition, have stayed away from overt campaign rhetoric from the Rose Garden or the White House, but it is the president's discretion. It is worth noting, however, to be fair, that had President Obama made this kind of speech from the Rose Garden, Republicans on Capitol Hill would likely have been up in arms. But this comes 112 days, 16 weeks to the day before Election Day, the November election. He spoke for... Yes, if it was Obama, Republicans would have been up in arms. But instead, they said nothing. Let's see, the clips from the thing. Let's keep going. Oh, this was pretty great. So these guys are in Huntington Beach, California. Uh, they're kind of surfer guys. Uh, they've got their masks, and they want to go out and help people. And again, this... Uh, the mask doesn't hurt you, right? I know people think that, oh, it cuts down your oxygen or you have to smell your own bad breath. And maybe that part's true. And yeah, it's not fun. I mean, it's definitely like you. What happens is I think you start hyperventilating, uh, that you just get nervous because you're not used to wearing a mask. And so you do uh, kind of shut down your air. You're not getting enough air. Uh, so it scares people. But again, what, what are we going to do? Just infect other people with the virus or wear a mask? I mean, it's like really... It's not that big a deal, uh, but it's really neat. These guys go try to go out and give out masks to help people and look at the negative way they're met. Uh, so civics-wise, these guys, even if maybe they're trying to make fun of these people, although I don't think so, I think that they actually did want to give out these masks and kind of make their beach safe uh, so that it could stay open, right? Again, self-interest. Uh, they need the beach to stay open. They want to go surfing. So if you don't wear a mask, the beach isn't going to stay open. We're going to spread the virus. They're not going to get to go surfing. 
Uh, but let's watch just a little of this. These guys try to give out masks to the people. Twitter video. Mask, but we brought our own supply to fix the problem. Guys, we've got a cure for the mask shortage. We've got masks. If anyone needs a mask, we've got them. You don't need one? Yeah, you might. Why not? I don't know if anybody has ever explained to you that breathing your own carbon monoxide is not healthy. I heard about that, but I heard about this other thing. Called the coronavirus? Yeah. Yeah, I know, but I'm not afraid of it. I know where I'm going when I die. Do you guys? Uh, I don't know. No, I'm not the sky? Not. Hopefully to a pokey shop. No, where, where do you go? Oh, you don't want to go to hell, do you? No, that'd suck. Yeah. You know, the mask yeah, tells me I'm supposed to be doing something. Right. If I'm out here, nobody's going to tell me to wear a mask. Right. For sure. If, if we had a cooler design, would that make a difference? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you. And again, we have all kinds of laws. You're not allowed to drink in public. You're not allowed to smoke in a lot of places now. Uh, you're not allowed to shoot up heroin or other drugs. There's all kinds of rules that we have uh, to protect the public and to protect people. You can't drive at like 120 miles in a residential zone, right? There's kids around, stuff like that. Uh, even the, pl the place they're at right there, you can't just drive a car there. Like, there are rules, right? It it's amazing uh, that these people have just decided now uh, that there are no more rules. Uh, when they get operated on at the doctors or the dentist, I hope they don't wear gloves uh, because wearing gloves would be limiting their right to get sick. Uh, when they cut them open in one of those sealed off surgical rooms where there's no disease or no anything, uh, the, the guy should just bring in a pizza and eat a piece of pizza before he cuts these people open because obviously they don't believe in germs or anything. I mean, it's just... And I know it's not these people's fault, and they're just a random example of the thing. But uh, still, they knew they were being filmed and recorded, and they said these stupid things, uh, which hurts other people. So it's pretty sad to see these guys and their, their quest to give out masks uh, be treated so poorly. All right, later, dudes. Yeah, be well. God bless. Sir, do you need a mask? No, I'm good. Thanks for asking. Cool. Hey, let me ask you this. Sure. Yeah. You get smoking weed. Excuse me, my man. We're giving away free masks. He's smart. He's socially distancing. Sorry, sir. Dude, what yeah, kind of sunscreen sure. do you use? Just like a Walmart brand. Oh, nice. I just use like the 50 spray. You know? oh, dude, you got such an even base. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I've been out a lot. You know, when you get laid off from work, you got time to hang out at the beach. Dude, same here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We can only give you masks if you walk, wear it on the beach. We should. I can't do it. I'm walking 20 miles, man. It ain't gonna work. That's a long walk, dude. Congrats. You can't wear a mask if you walk. I don't know. Maybe it obscures vision. I oh, need salt water because this shit. If you breathe in salt water, it's healthy. I... What? Oh, dude, I'm gonna put it's... salt on everything now. No, no, sea salt. Sea salt. Oh. Other salt, you can get fucking. It can kill you. What's your car? Nudist for masks. Seriously? Yeah, we're nudists. Right on. A little bit of action you know there. I hang out on a couple nude beaches myself. Oh, right on, dude. Oh, yeah. Drop a little dong there, yeah. That's how you guys call it. Dropping dong. Dropping yeah. dong. Yeah. Right on. Do you need a mask? No, thank you. Why not? Because I live here. Because I live here. So, again, I, I don't know what to do with this. Uh, it's kind of a funny video, and I know they're kind of making fun of it, but uh, gosh. And this it seems like it's in California, too. California is supposed to have a pretty good educational system. Uh, it's pretty sad. <sighs> they won't wear masks. Uh, the White House has been attacking Dr. Anthony Fauci. A White House trade advisor, Peter Navarro. Now, remember, Navarro, if any of you have read the Trump books, uh, is an insane economic advisor. Uh, none of the other economists agree with this guy. It's like 97 to 3. Uh, they went out of, the way, out of their way to find an insane guy to agree with the insane things they wanted to do. Uh, and now this economics advisor, yes, uh, numbers and business and figures and papers and trade, Right, economics is trade. Uh, he's now become an expert on doctors and science. Uh, he's written an essay attacking Dr. Fauci, saying he's been wrong about everything I have interacted with him on. So 
So if you're batshit crazy in the first place, you just stay batshit crazy and you can go out of your lane and write things about doctors and science that you know nothing about because you don't know anything about economics either. He's not an expert. He doesn't even know that you should be an expert in your field. But yes, a very shocking thing to see the president and his team attacking Dr. Fauci. Uh, Dr. Fauci is kind of more popular than Trump now. Many people have said Trump uh, told Navarro to write this op-ed that he personally signed off on it uh, because he doesn't like Fauci because Fauci is more popular than him. That might seem like a childish reason for an adult to do something, but uh, you guys could also start reading Mary Trump's book. I'm about halfway through, and uh, you really feel like you understand uh, where Trump is coming from after you learn a little bit more about his family. But that's okay. It's been 18 days since we found out that the president knew that Russia put a bounty on our soldiers, and he's still done nothing about it. Even if he only found out 18 days ago, uh, he hasn't even issued a statement saying, hey, Russia, stop doing that. Or, hey, Vlad, my buddy, uh, stop paying people to murder our soldiers. Hasn't even said that. Uh, there's all, been all this talk. Uh, when I turned back on the news, they were suddenly talking about reopening schools. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I was like, how could you want to do that in the situation we're in? And it turns out they already started in Arizona. Uh, these three teachers... Uh, they shared a classroom. They were instructing online students. They wore masks. They washed hands. They kept distance. All three of the teachers were infected by COVID-19, and one of them died from it. So we have a dead teacher. She taught summer school. And that should be it. That, that should be the end of opening schools, right? Oh, all three of them got infected and one of them died. Well, we shouldn't do that. Uh, but in Orange County, a very conservative Republican place, uh, the school board there has voted to reopen the schools. The, apparently the school districts are going to ignore the school board because they're fucking crazy. Um, but yes, even after a death, we can't stop that. Florida set a one-day COVID-19 death record for the state, which means 132 people. That means a Floridian is dying every 11 minutes from COVID-19. Looking at this show, uh, we've lost about 10 Floridians so far just from this show. And a lot of people are upset about this new national anthem idea and blah, 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 and left wing, whatever. It's not a good song, right? It's not original. It's based on an English drinking song. It's, it's cool the way he wrote it, right? I mean, the way he wrote it, sitting there watching the battle, the shots back and forth at Fort McHenry near Baltimore, and uh, they had the giant flag, and I've seen it. It's a very big flag. It's very messed up. It's at the Smithsonian. Uh, it's on a, you know, it's well protected now, but it wasn't protected for a long time. So there's, there's bullet holes and all kinds of things in this giant flag. Uh, that he saw waving. And, and we can still tell the story and we can talk about the song and there's lots of footage of people singing the song. Um, but, you know, it was 100, 100, 200 years ago, right? I mean, we could we could change it up. We could have a better song, a song that's more about who we are as a people and that brings us together, right? The, the thing, after you, after you sing this song, we should all feel together. And I think if we had uh, Lean On Me, as the anthem, as I, I gave you the words at the beginning of the show, I didn't, I didn't torch it, I didn't read it, I didn't sing it, but uh, I think everyone would sing along, and I think we'd all cry, and I think we'd get to the end of, and I think the idea, just the idea of, of government as lean on me, and that the government is your friend, and the government can help you out, and sure, that's the opposite of what Ronald Reagan said in the 80s when he wanted to destroy the government so that the corporations could take over, which has been very successful for the corporations, uh, they've done really well. But I, I think alternatively, like JFK, you know, ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. That's not a bad idea either. You know, we took a social contract out together uh, to work together to have a civilization and a society. 
Uh, why shouldn't we work together to have a better civilization and a better society? And I think Lean On Me would bring us there. Uh, go listen to it. I'm not going to play the song, uh, but it's fantastic stuff. Bill Withers, Lean On Me for National Anthem. Uh, Chuck Woolerly, Woolerly, a game show host. I used to host Love Connection and some other shows. Uh, came out with a big rant, uh, very much supporting Trump and saying that doctors were lying and that everything's a conspiracy. Uh, well, it turns out that karma got to him. Chuck Woolerly's son has tested positive for COVID-19 just hours after his father called it a hoax. Like John Lennon said in his great song, instant karma is going to get you. It's going to knock you right on your face. Uh, very strange stuff. Here's Stephen Miller, the anti-immigrant advisor of the president, speechwriter, uh, clearly doing something weird with his hands. It kind of looks like a W and then a W and a P. It looks like he's giving a white power symbol uh, right there in the White House. That's odd. Nothing to see here. And uh, here's that tweet that went very viral on Twitter. Uh, shout out to at Jack D. Murphy. Congratulations. 79,000 retweets, 470,000 likes. Uh, that's not bad at all. And he says, uh, like I said earlier, remember Tom? Remember how he just sold his $500 million share in MySpace and retired so he could have a nice life? He never sold our data never tried to influence elections, never lobbied against privacy leg legislations. What a man. My space was just too pure for this world. And I don't know, some of you might not remember my space or maybe you never used it, uh, but it was a really neat thing where uh, kind of as a technical thing, uh, everyone had to be friends with someone else. So to make that happen, uh, when you started out, you had a friend. Uh, your friend was Tom. Uh, this guy, he's one of the programmers, one of the creators of MySpace. And uh, everyone was friends with Tom. It was kind of cool. So, And he never did anything bad. He just sold his company and went off to the beach. Not bad at all. Uh, Patton Oswald, comedian, says, Holy fuck, this reality. And yes, Texas teachers are writing their wills as the state promises to open schools in the fall. Obviously, I think they should quit, uh, but they need money and all that, and they have a, a noble profession helping people, educating people. Uh, it's tough to give that up, uh, but you've got to go remote now. Uh, you just can't. Uh, again, with that, uh, that council meeting, everyone coming to the council meeting, all sharing each other's air and germs, uh, then going home to their families to infect them. Uh, that's a horrible idea. And the idea that you would send kids multiple times in a row to a small room where they could all infect each other and bring the disease back home. Uh, again, it just it seems like they're intentionally spreading the virus to destroy America and to kill Americans. And uh, left wing, right wing, uh, I think that's wrong. So there you go. Uh, Chris Murphy, senator from Connecticut, writes, I remember going to the West Wing in the fall of 2014. My meeting was running late. The whole place was buzzing. A young staff assistant said, Sorry, it's been crazy here. It's Ebola 24-7. You know how many confirmed Ebola cases we had in the United States? Four. Four cases. So I think we can do better. I think we could work harder. Uh, as I said earlier, I am in enjoying and reading Mary Trump's book uh, about Trump. Uh, then uh, Asha here says that when the family finds out that Donald has tried to get his demented father to sign a codicil to his will, which would put him entirely in charge of his father's estates, his sister Marianne says we would have been penniless. It's a pretty big moment in the book uh, when Donald tries to steal the entirety of their father's inheritance for himself. 
And what's amazing, as she says, is that the family overlooks this. They got really lucky. The father uh, wasn't so demented that day and uh, said, no, I'm not signing this. And then later on, they found out what they tried to get him to sign. And, uh, but they just kept inviting Donald over after that. They kept having family Christmas and Thanksgiving and all these things. And uh, she really couldn't understand it. But that's the, the trend of his entire life is that no matter what he does, he's never punished for it. And it's really interesting to see this trend come all the way up to the impeachment and then now maybe all the way up to the election. Uh, if he loses this election and if he actually leaves office, which is a, a big if, the Deutsche Bank loans come due in two years and he won't have presidential protection. Uh, the lawsuits, the criminal cases, the individual one, uh, the case that sent... Uh, Michael Cohen, his former lawyer, to jail, uh, will all continue operating and will continue operating against him, and he'll have no way to stop them or to fire the people investigating him and all these things. So if he doesn't win, or right, if he doesn't hold power, he could actually be punished for something that he did for the first time in his life. And it's going to be really interesting to see how he handles that. Uh, I'm betting not well. Uh, but we'll see. I, I definitely suggest the Mary Trump book, uh, whether you want to buy it or download it or whatever you like. Uh, it's very available. And uh, it's different than the other Trump books. I've read uh, five or six, several of, of the other Trump books, uh, usually written by insiders, sometimes written by reporters. Uh, but this one, Mary Trump has direct access to him for her entire life. Uh, she tells story after story. And he doesn't look good in a single story. So quite an interesting profile. And you really do kind of, I believe, uh, through books and knowledge and learning and things, uh, you do get to understand uh, what kind of a man he is and what he values. Mike Pence said, We don't want the Center for Disease Control guidance to be a reason why people don't reopen their school. What? As David Korn says mockingly, we don't want the FAA to be a reason why unsafe planes are grounded. We don't want the USDA to be a reason tainted beef is pulled from the stores. Uh, this school opening issue has never made any sense. Uh, I just came into it late, having ignored the news for a week. Um, but yes, it's, it's absolutely insane. Uh, there's nowhere else to go. And, and the idea when the president has been pressed on this and the interview that he gave is that uh, the problem is the parents can't go to work. That's why we have to send the children back. It's not about whether or not there's no virus. It's just about the economy and making money and widgets, right? But we all know, and we've said this here over and over again, you can't reopen the economy until you kill the virus. That's all it is. Even Bill Gates said, it. he's like, yeah, people aren't going to walk over you know, piles of bodies to go to work. Interesting that uh, Russia has used Trump's naive intelligence sharing to try to assassinate Chechens in Europe. Uh, yes, uh, Trump doesn't know what he's doing. He's sharing information that turns out to be very valuable to Russia and Putin as they attempt to murder their enemies. Great. Uh, here's a part two of those guys handing out masks on the beach. Uh, for some reason, the video came out small on this one, so I don't know. I'm going to share it. Uh, but there was a great line at the end where the guy says, you know, I learned something today. If you're going to hand out masks, don't wear sandals. Wear shoes that you can fight or run in. <laughs> Pretty amazing, yes. Trying to help people try and hand out masks has become so politicized that you can see here in the clip uh, this man stops riding his bike and comes back to fight them uh, because they offered him a mask. Pretty amazing stuff. The post office is being purposely destroyed, uh, having difficult changes and slower mail delivery, uh, recasting the USPS as a business rather than a government service. This is a government service that allows anyone anywhere, even in rural countries and rural counties, 
Talk about you, Republicans. Talk about you, red states. It allows you to continue sending and receiving mail, Amazon packages, business contracts, letters from grandma, all kinds of things. We would just cut these people off. If it was a business, you'd just cut these people off. And they wouldn't get mail. And then we'd have all this stuff about how bad it is to live in a rural place and how horrible. You can't even get Amazon packages. You can't even get anything. It's so terrible. It's going to happen soon. And just so they, they can screw up the election and say that it was a fraud. All of this is just setting the ground for the election is fraud. And remember, everyone's all, oh, just wait. Just wait till the election. But the problem with that idea is that it gives us one more shot. One more chance. Oh, you win the election, it changes everything. What if you lose the election? What if it's stolen from you? What if they fraud you out of the election? What do you do then? That's why you should never have just one chance. You should never have just one lever to pull. You should have a backup plan. There's been a lot of things lately. The bounty gate, not wearing masks, spreading the virus, trying to ruin America from the inside. Uh, that he could be removed for right now. And if you removed him right now, had Nancy Pelosi as president for a few months, I'm sure that she would step down and give power to the next person. I can't say that about the current person. That's why it's so dangerous to leave us with just one lever to pull and then a month and a half to wait till January 20th to see if we really get a new president after all. Uh, Paul Krugman says, I don't know how many people realize that we're going to hit this iceberg in just 10 days because virtually all beneficiaries will be cut off for the last week of this month. Yes, there's going to be massive evictions uh, because they didn't freeze rent and because they didn't continue the stimulus. These evictions are going to put people out onto the street where they can spread the virus. It's going to make them live in large homeless centers and homeless encampments where they can spread the virus. It's probably going to look like Hurricane Katrina where they start opening up uh, multi-purpose rooms and school gyms and other places like the Superdome. And they allow the displaced people to stay there temporarily and spread the virus. Again, if you wanted to save the country, you have to put a pause on rent. You have to put a pause on landlords, too. You just pause the whole thing. Sadly, as it is, you print money and you get through it, right? This is the crisis. This is what you have the money printing power for. Not for war, not for nonsense, but for crisis. This is a crisis. And the way to win is to stay home. The way to win is to stay home, wear a mask, give it four to six weeks, uh, the virus goes away. Only people that have it have it. We keep them separated, and then we win. Then we can go back to work. Then we can get a vaccine, all kinds of other things, and society can continue. Uh, but instead, uh, these people don't really care about the least among them. You saw how quickly the corporate welfare and the size of the corporate welfare, and then you, know, you got your $1,200 check, and you paid rent once, and uh, it's gone now. <laughs> and that was three months ago. So, yes, it's all happening in slow motion. It's all been predicted. We've predicted it several times. And apparently in just 10 days, uh, we're going to go off the eviction cliff. So we'll see how that goes. We could learn from other people in other countries. In Israel, they opened schools on May 17th. Since then, at least 1,335 students and 691 staff have become infected and it appears to have fueled a resurgence of COVID-19 outbreaks. So again, learn from other countries. Don't reopen your schools. And they, look how these people are trying hard, too. They've got masks on. They're socially distanced. Still, didn't work. It's just a super spreader event. It's really obvious, too. Uh, shout out to uh, SB, uh, let's see, who is this? Mezzi16. 
Uh, they're raising money for the Space Box. It's a solar-powered full Bitcoin Lightning node. They got a huge boost from SBF Alameda and FTX Official. They're 59% of the way uh, towards raising the $10,000 they need, presumably to build a solar-powered Bitcoin Lightning node. This sounds great. I remember it was one of the first things we talked about back in 2013, 2014. Uh, we were like, what if we can harness the energy of the sun uh, to, to mine Bitcoins, right? Wouldn't that be cool? Uh, it just connects up to the network. A bunch of Bitcoins show up. You don't have to worry about batteries. Uh, you can just mine it directly into the Bitcoin. So very cool. And it's very cool to see people using TallyCoin. Check out TallyCoin at tallyco.in. Uh, you can set up your own fundraiser. All you need is a Bitcoin address, a public one uh, that you can get from any Bitcoin wallet. Uh, so you could public, uh, you could have a fundraiser direct to your Trezor. You could have a fundraiser to your green address wallet on your phone. You could even have a fundraiser straight to your Coinbase account. I'm not going to judge, although that's a bad idea. But yes, it's amazing at TallyCoin. They don't take any of your money. Uh, they can't access it. They can't take your money. They don't hold your funds. Uh, it's free, and it's for you, and it's at tallyco.in. Give it a try today. Uh, sad news in the United Kingdom. Banksy uh, painted a pretty sweet-looking uh, couple of stenciled rats. Uh, some of the rats were spraying green ooze out of their mouths uh, because they weren't wearing masks. Other of the rats were wearing masks and not spreading ooze. So it was a Banksy coronavirus uh, implementation. It was on a train car, and some of it did look very graffiti-y. Uh, but it's really sad. England uh, cleaned up the train car, lickety-split. Uh, the anti-graffiti guys just took them out. So they destroyed a priceless work of art. As it's saying here, uh, Nick Harkaway uh, theorizes, Given that the Banksy art on canvas can go for seven figures, and that the S7 carriage cost around a million when new, and this was a pandemic-themed piece of art composed of multiple images, uh, you figure they probably threw away anything upwards of $3 million, maybe five times that. A weird choice. Uh, they could have even taken the car off of the train, left it in the yard, and sold the entire car, and still made $2 million. Easy. Uh, they could have removed the artwork from the car. It would have been difficult, taken a while. Uh, they could have sold it in pieces. Uh, the graffiti guy allegedly didn't know it was a Banksy. Uh, it had his iconic rats. It was signed Banksy. And uh, if your job is cleaning up graffiti in London, England, you'd think you'd know just a little bit about Banksy. Even just knowing that the rats are possible Banksy uh, could have had their supervisor look at it. But yes, a, a disaster for the United Kingdom. But then again, you have to look at the other side too and you have to say, well, if Banksy's suddenly allowed to spray paint train cars, well, why not me? And why not every other artist who has a can full of spray paint and some stencils? Uh, why is Banksy's high art and mine's not? And obviously, you know, Banksy put a lot of work in and a lot of time in to get to this level. But it, it does, uh, the idea of putting art in a public place, uh, graffiti versus graffiti art, uh, these kind of things. Uh, still very much a debate on both sides. I mean, I'm kind of, I'm kind of with Banksy here, but uh, I, I can also see it from the transit workers' perspective. Like somebody did just come and wreck one of their nice cars. They wrecked it with a potentially $3 million or $3 million pound painting, <laughs> but still, there's always two sides to things. There's a little bit here. Uh, you can see his signing of his name is very much in the graffiti style with the melting uh, green paint and stuff. I mean, this part uh, was not the best part of the mural. Uh, some of the other ones are nicer, and it looks like a really nice train car too. <laughs> we don't have those here in America. Uh, if you ever see disinformation on Twitter and you want to automatically have it tagged for you, check out BotSentinel.com. Uh, it's a very cool plugin you can get that will mark things. Disinformation, it'll also mark uh, when they think that the account might be a bot. Uh, so very cool stuff from Bot Sentinel. Uh, Balaji was talking about the desire to make Ethereum subscriptions work. He says there's progress towards an implementation and uh, there's a $25,000 grant uh, incentive to complete this. But uh, as you guys know, we already created 
software allowing people to subscribe with Bitcoin five years ago. It's called ProTip. It's open source and was released before the Brave browser. Uh, similar ideas, similar goals, all just trying to pay people uh, for their work on the internet. So we do agree and we share these ideas and we're on a team together, but you could just do it now with ProTip. They could take the open source code uh, that we have right here on GitHub. The ProTip uh, source code is available. They could add in the Lightning Network and boom, ProTip would be ready for the masses again. ProTip also used transaction batching. Uh, more than five years before Coinbase, the exchange, suddenly started to use it uh, to save themselves a fortune in transaction fees. Uh, check out ProTip at ProTip.is. ProTip had subscriptions, but it also had a mode where it would scan the web page for a Bitcoin address. You could put it in the footer or put it in the head of the document. And based upon the amount of time you spent upon that page, it would tip your top 10 pages at the end of the week based upon your allowance. So you could tip 10 bucks a week. A dollar would go to each of the people on your list, uh, depending on the amount of time you spend there. It was pretty amazing. It still works today. Uh, obviously, Bitcoin fees are up a little bit, so you want to keep that in mind. Uh, it hasn't been rewritten for Lightning. Uh, Balaji's offering a $25,000 grant. I'd be glad to accept it now for pro tip. It's already written. Uh, but we made this uh, software together, Chris Ellis and I and Leo, the programmer. Uh, we made it for $15,000 or less in donations from the Bitcoin community. Uh, the software is open source and was delivered on time. Max Hillebrand writes in with an update to Jitsi, uh, the telecommunication software that we're using instead of Zoom, because Zoom is a Chinese product that does not support Tiananmen Square and Chinese freedom. Uh, they also spy on you and shut down your chats if you talk about Tiananmen Square, so that's pretty bad. And recently they said that they were only going to offer end-to-end -end encryption for their paid users. Ha, 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 ha. But now at Jitsi, the free and open source alternative to Zoom, uh, you can communicate end to end. Participants who join the call without the encryption key will not be able to hear the others. And no information is leaked to the server. This is very cool. Uh, check out Jitsi. It's impossible to spell. J-I-T-S-I. -I. It's not a real word, but good luck with that. But it's very cool video conferencing software at jitsi.com, I think. That's what it is. Uh, Russian activists are using Bitcoin and the Kremlin doesn't like it. Activists, activists and dissidents in Russia are using crypto for fundraising, yet widespread adoption is still far away. Uh, this is always the way it's going to go and the, always the way it's been. Uh, there was that interesting project we talked about a few weeks ago called SciHub, uh, where kind of similar to Erin Swartz, uh, she was borrowing, <laughs> she was borrowing scientific articles from a private database and making them public in her own public database. They were supported by Bitcoin. Uh, it's pretty neat stuff. I wish we'd had uh, Bitcoin years ago to show more support to Erin Swartz, and maybe that wouldn't have ended the way that it did. 28 million people may soon become homeless in the United States. Uh, here's a preview. Like I was saying, they're probably going to be sleeping in large gymnasiums. This looks like maybe it's an ice hockey rink. Uh, and, uh, yeah, this is obvious. It's going to happen. Everyone knows about it. We could, we could prevent it. Uh, you just have to print money and give it to these people. You just have to have a pause on rent. Uh, you could have a pause for landlords, too. Uh, we could just wait this thing out or the, the government kind of steps in and pays the rent is actually what you're going to need. But uh, instead, we could just destroy that whole system and let all these people go into this homeless system, uh, which is going to be disastrous for them. And it's disastrous for everyone. All these people can't work. The GDP goes down. Uh, that's a gross domestic product. That's how much money we all make as a team here in Team America. And uh, whenever something like this happens, Team America gets weaker. A similar thing happened when we did not save the firms. Uh, in the Denmark model, 
They saved the firms. They gave direct money to the firm. They say, hey, you work at Jamba Juice before this crisis. Jamba Juice continues to pay you what they were paying you. Government backs it. And after this crisis is over, you go back to working at Jamba Juice. Right? Great deal. Good for everyone. We keep all the intelligence that way. All of the expertise and the knowledge that you learned at your job is kept intact. But that's not what they did here in America. Don't get excited. It's not like we're clever here. That's what they did in Denmark. Here in America, we just let it all go. And the intelligence from all these firms just spread out. And all of that knowledge was lost. And all of these restaurants were allowed to shut down. All these other firms and businesses. Because we put everyone on the unemployment system. So uh, we destroyed the firms, put them on the unemployment. We're about to destroy the housing system through inaction during a pandemic crisis. Right? We're going to just let everyone go into the eviction system into the homeless system right it's not going to work it's going to be a disaster it's completely preventable we have all the numbers uh, but we're not going to do anything we're just going to let this happen lark davis at the crypto lark writes 28 million americans risk being evicted for context that's three times more than during the great recession but hey, stock markets are soaring. Yeah, boy. Meanwhile, elites get trillions in free money. It's socialism for the rich and capitalism for the poor. Does seem that way. Doesn't seem very fair at all. Um, again, Trump said more insane things in a speech in an interview with CBS News. He said... Asked about coronavirus testing delays, Trump claims, I could say testing is working too much because it's discovering so many cases. Uh, he continued on saying that if you cut testing by 50%, you'd have half as many cases. If you cut it again, you'd have 25% as many cases, a fourth as much. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, it's, it's more about the knowledge. You would know about less cases, but the cases would still exist. So the sick people would still be out there spreading this, the disease. We would just have less knowledge about it. Uh, if we stopped testing for breast cancer, we would find less breast cancer, but breast cancer would still exist. It's a logical problem, and he keeps repeating it. So surely someone must have taken him aside by now and said, Actually, you know, the virus exists separate from the testing. The testing doesn't cause the virus, right? But this is still where we are. This keeps getting repeated, despite it being completely insane. As Judd Apatow, director, writer, comedian, movie maker, says, how come every single Democratic senator and congressperson isn't out in the street saying he should be removed from office? Where's the energy? The fury? Save people. He's murdering people with his madness and corruption. And again, there are, as we speak right now, about 100 days away from the election, about 190 days away from the inauguration. Uh, there's still options. Right? There's still a chance there's other levers you could pull. You don't just have to wait till the election, but by waiting till the election, we wait till there's one more lever, and then there's nothing else. Uh, shout out to our friend Ben, Ben Ark, BTC Socialists. Uh, had a nice Twitter conversation with the former Greek finance minister, Yanov Varakafics. And uh, later on, I uh, wrote an article to him in uh, Bitcoin Magazine. Very cool op-ed. And Ben on, had said on Twitter that he thought uh, that Mr. Giannis had uh, a good opinion about Bitcoin in his book and uh, quoted him. Then uh, Giannis disagreed, saying he wasn't crazy about Bitcoin and Ben wrote this article trying to get him to re-examine it and to look at some of the new technologies such as the Lightning Network and liquid sidechains and how this has changed Bitcoin, giving it more options and presumably uh, could interest the former Greek finance minister. So very cool to see how 
Uh, just a small discussion on Twitter can be amplified into an op-ed. And now Mr. Verikoffis is uh, said he's going to review the article and uh, draft a response. Uh, so very cool. And uh, another neat way in which uh, the world is so flat right now. Uh, thanks to things like Twitter and social media and the Internet, uh, if you want to be an expert, if you want to chat with experts and have discussions with them, uh, you just have to go out there and do it. If they're a good expert like this guy, if they're a scientific expert, uh, they'll likely respond to you and consider what you have to say. And if it's, a, uh, you know, if it's, if it's valid, uh, they might write more about it. You might influence their thinking. What a, what a great conversation of ideas uh, that we're having on the Internet. Very cool. Uh, Governor Stitt from Oklahoma City, who tested positive for the coronavirus after attending Trump's Tulsa rally, is the same governor in March who posted a picture of himself in a restaurant and encouraged others to do the same, writing at the time, it's packed tonight. So yes, all of these bizarre anti-scientific pro-virus statements and actions taken by some of the leaders of this country, particularly one party, uh, will never be forgotten. Like They're never going to say, oh, it was a tough time. Oh, you didn't know anything. No, they're going to say, no, we know exactly what you knew. Uh, we know what you were briefed on. We know the information you have. And then this is what you said and did completely in disagreement with the information you're given. It's amazing. Uh, they recently switched the data collection. It used to go through the Center for Disease Control, and it was given to the public because it's our data. Uh, now they're going to give it directly to the Trump administration, to the Health and Human Services Department. Uh, they've already cut off the CDC and the CDC websites uh, that were informing the public about this. So again, when numbers are bad, you just hide the numbers, right? You don't try to improve them. You don't worry about the actual damage to human beings. You just hide the numbers. So uh, as you can see here, uh, Scott Dworkin writes, Trump is covering up the number of Americans infected and dead from coronavirus by having the data rerouted to his administration instead of the CDC. This is Trump's biggest scam ever. It is criminal. And PayPal seems to be serious about cryptocurrency this time. Uh, they say they're developing cryptocurrency cap capabilities in a letter to the European Commission. Uh, so it is getting serious. PayPal may offer crypto soon. Uh, Trump has brought up new objections to a subpoena seeking his tax returns as Jill Wine Banks, former Watergate prosecutor, writes... This can only mean he has something really awful to hide. And uh, again, a free preview of the future. What's in the tax returns? Well, the president pretty much went bankrupt in the 90s and needed large loans to bail out his horrible investments in Atlantic City, where he bought one, two, then three casinos, all of which competed against each other. Each time he bought a casino, his business got worse. Really unbelievable. Uh, but yes, what's he hiding in the tax returns? After his business got worse and all of his casinos went out of business, he needed large loans to stay in business. Where did these loans come from? Who gave him the loans? The tax return documents will show this, and they'll likely show that the loans came from Russia. That's why he's never going to release them. But somehow we might see him anyway. Uh, this is happening in the 21st century, completely unchecked. Defund China. Someone used a drone footage of CCP authorities loading Uyghurs onto trains, presumably to transport them to re-education camps. Uh, this is the Holocaust happening in real time in China. The Uyghur Muslim minority, uh, they've been taken to camps, they've been re-educated, and look at this, they're even masked here. They're masked and chained. And uh, some of them are being sterilized uh, so that they can't have babies so that there won't be any more Uyghur Muslims. 
Uh, the president was told about this during a meeting with Xi, and he said that it's fine. He said, there's nothing we need to do about this. This isn't a complete human rights disaster and a catastrophe. Human beings loaded onto trains uh, to be quote-unquote re-educated and uh, in some cases sterilized. So there's more horrible news all over the place. In uh, Berkeley, California, they just became the first city to replace the United States uh, to replace police enforcement of traffic violations with unarmed city employees. Uh, this is incredible because it does separate the police from the traffic. Uh, there's no reason for them to search your car if they pull you over to give you a speeding ticket. They should write you a speeding ticket and let you go. This ends a lot of the uh, confrontations that people have with police, and it shows how Different departments for different jobs. Oh, you have a mental health problem? We're going to send mental health workers. Oh, you're having a domestic dispute? We're going to send counselors. You know, we're not going to just send men with guns to every situation because it's really obvious. What do they do? Oh, you have a mental health problem? Men with guns will show up and murder the person who has a mental health problem. Oh, is a, you know, domestic dispute? Men with guns and clubs will show up and, you know, hurt the people or murder them. I mean, we have to separate that. Oh, you have a bank robbery. Send the men with guns. Thank you. Oh, you're being held up at the convenience store. Send the men with guns, right? You have to send the right tool for the right job. Uh, there's a famous Japanese saying, or, or not the Japanese, it's the other one. It's uh, when all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And that's the police, right? Everything looks like a nail. Oh, there's a protest in the street. Send the men with guns. You know, we could send the protest monitors, the people who, you know, have radios and walkie-talkies, maybe clubs if you want to go the British system. And they talk to each other and they monitor the protest and they help people. And uh, that would be better than just every time, every time we have a problem, we use the hammer. This is only Berkeley, California so far. It's a very liberal city. Uh, but if it's successful, this program could be spread to other places. So let's keep an eye on that. Caitlin Collins, uh, CNN, has a great quote uh, by Dr. Fauci. He says, I can't explain Peter Navarro. He's in a world by himself, so I don't even want to go there. And remember, Navarro was a radical economic advisor for Trump. Uh, none of the other economics or other advisors agreed with him. None of the economists agree with him. Uh, they all think he's insane. And now he's spreading his insanity uh, to attack Dr. Fauci. It's a bad look. Uh, but again, once you're already insane, what do you care? He said, uh, Dr. Fauci asked by the Atlantic about why the White House is attacking him. Uh, that is a bit bizarre, I have to tell you. I think what happened with the list that came out, I think those involved realized that it was a major mistake on their part and that it reflects poorly on them. Uh, Dr. Fauci rising above the controversy, uh, refusing to get involved, and just mirroring it back on the morons who attacked him in the first place. But again, the president was jealous because Dr. Fauci has a higher approval, approval rating than the president. Much higher. Nevada now has more than 1,000 COVID-19 patients in the hospital. So again, it happens in the same way every time. First you have cases, then you have hospitalization, then you have deaths. So no spoilers there. Uh, President Trump doubled down on the exciting can of beans situation and involved the famous Resolute desk uh, built from pieces of the USS Resolute uh, present from the British. Uh, JFK's son famously poked out of the door in the front in a famous photo. And now that same desk where so many presidents have sat is now being used to sell beans. You can get a cool can of beans from this guy. And I, I wish it was a fake photo. I wish we could just say that's not true. 
president would never do that right there on the desk. This is just a thumbs up photo. Somebody put products in. Now nah, it's a, it's a real photo. It really happened. As Aaron Rupar says, this deleted scene from idiocracy stinks. <laughs> Good stuff. Let's see a lot about the op ed. Uh, yes, we've lost control of the data as Trey here reminds us. I just want to be extremely clear that from this day forth, you can't trust any data moving forward on COVID. Blocking the flow of real-time data is about, about an already out-of-control pandemic to force reopening the economy is some supervillain shit. It does seem to be quite demonic, really. As Ben here reminds us, it's the year 2020. 135,000 Americans have died from a mysterious virus, and the President of the United States is promoting canned beans on his social media page. It's hard to believe. It's hard to believe. Uh, they're saying that the Vegas recovery uh, could take years. Remember when they thought it would just be over in three months? They're like, just reopen. Who cares? Reopen. Uh, but yes, Vegas is no longer a gambling mecca. It's a world-class tourist destination, so this affects all kinds of other groups of people, people that like concerts, people that like nightclubs, all that kind of thing. Uh, they're all not coming. They're not going to come. No one's going to a concert at least till 2021. And it's been clear since the beginning. But uh, They're saying now that a White House source on the uh, Navarro attack on Fauci says not only was he authorized by Trump, he was encouraged. So they're attacking the very doctors that are trying to keep you safe. And they're hiding the information and the data that would give you knowledge about what's going on. So uh, it's going to get dark, like the dark age is dark, and lots of people are going to die, and we're not even going to know about it. So we're like those monkeys in the famous thing, the no, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. So just close your eyes and it'll go away. Uh, then the Bitcoin scam happened on Twitter. We started to tweet about it. Uh, it was pretty interesting. They got Bill Gates. Uh, one of the first accounts actually taken down was a popular Bitcoin trader, Angelo BTC. I saw this over on the Crypto Cobain account. And uh, it was interesting. They've got a great graphic. I don't know if we'll get to it today. Uh, showing the spread of these tweets. And uh, it started out in Bitcoin. <laughs> the guys uh, started first uh, with a private group you could join to get Angelo's advice on Bitcoin. Uh, apparently did very well. Uh, then they started the generic assault on crypto exchanges. Uh, after they did crypto exchanges, they expanded again to celebrities. Uh, so really interesting hack. Uh, it also seemed like it was all happening in real time. Uh, like the hackers were going account by account, uh, pasting in this information. Uh, it didn't seem like it was automated. It took several hours. Uh, amazing that Twitter wasn't able to shut it down faster or that they allowed it to go uh, that long. Uh, just like those uh, crazy YouTube videos that raised $50,000. Uh, YouTube, Twitter uh, don't seem very interested in protecting their uh, users, which is so much more important with something like Bitcoin. If you stop it early, you could seriously save people's money. Uh, if you wait longer, uh, the worse it gets. And they got Bill Gates yesterday. They're sending out accounts. Uh, the CoinDesk handle was also hacked. Uh, they've partnered with crypto to health and giving back. Think about that. That reads true. That really reads true. I think Coinbase is already, CoinDesk has already put out tweets like this uh, about them sponsoring and supporting people and giving back, giving back to the community. Uh, but yes, then the story continued to spread. Jameson Lopp uh, wisely said, you know what the real news is from this incident? Someone appears to have root-level access to Twitter. They own this platform. They are in God mode. They can do anything they want on it. And their top choice is to trick you into parting with your precious Bitcoin. It is interesting. They could have done anything. They could have shorted stocks and all kinds of other things, but they just wanted Bitcoin. It's pretty good. Uh, Dennis Parker says millions of people are asking themselves, 
what the fuck is Bitcoin? And that this is bullish for the fledgling cryptocurrency. Connor Brown says, there's a reason they're not asking for Ethereum. <laughs> and uh, Jay Ratcliffe says, uh, how bad does Roger feel that no one asked for Bitcoin cash during the Twitter hack? Yes, it is interesting. All the altcoins seem to go away uh, when it's hacking time. Uh, Twitter posted that they were aware of the incident. Uh, they failed to say, don't send any Bitcoin. Uh, so there might be a lawsuit there later on. Somebody sent their Bitcoin uh, after the Twitter support message, which was not detailed enough. Uh, let's see. Here's one of the close-ups. Uh, not the full one, though. Uh, the hackers raised around $50,000 worth of Bitcoin in just 20 minutes. So maybe it would have been a good idea to warn them first. Uh, Andreas Antonopoulos, uh, Antonopoulos, his Twitter account was hacked. Uh, he eventually had to go over to a, a Spanish-language backup account. Uh, he says that it's a good thing that they asked for Bitcoin. It's a compliment. And if a kidnapper asks for uncut diamonds and Swiss bearer bonds, uh, do you blame the diamonds or the bonds? No. Uh, Sicarius agrees with us and everyone else that these hackers are super low IQ. Imagine if Binance, Coinbase, Coindesk, Finex, CZ, and all these other hacked accounts we're tweeting, blasting about SEC raids, exchange hacks, funds not being Seifu, etc. Uh, they could have shorted at beforehand and Bitcoin would have went down, uh, he thinks, to 8400 And uh, here's a story from Hannah Libowitz. Uh, she says they put their kids in camp for just a few days. Everyone was masked. The kids were separated. No food sharing. Well, now there's a COVID outbreak. Kids and counselors are sick. Everyone is scared, overwhelmed, and quarantined. This is what school is going to look like, too. And it's frightening. Uh, Larry Semak says this attack is of massive proportions and will impact Twitter for years to come. Elon Musk and Bill Gates have now both tweeted the same scam tweets. The implications are enormous. No one's tweets should be taken at face value, which is a big problem for the Twitter company. Uh, the White House is continuing to punish people who testify against it like a mafia dawn. The National Security Council sent a list of allegations about Lieutenant Colonel Vindman to the Pentagon after he testified in the impeachment proceedings against Trump. The Pentagon received the document just as Lieutenant Colonel Vindman was on track to be promoted. Uh, they continue to work against these people. Of course, Lieutenant Colonel Vindman, sadly, in his speech before Congress, said to his father, who had brought him and his brother over from Ukraine uh, to have a better life in America, he said, in America, you won't be hurt for telling the truth. He said that he'll be okay. And we're starting to see that his optimism in America might have been misplaced. At an interesting time on Twitter, it was the silence of the verified users. Uh, Twitter shut down verified user accounts to stop the scam messages from spreading. Uh, Facebook, who's had similar problems and similar attacks, never did anything like this. Uh, really enjoying Trump's book. It's unlike any of the other Trump books. Reads more like an early Frankenstein prequel. How the Monster Was Created in Childhood. Uh, so definitely recommend uh, the new Mary Trump book. Uh, here's a joke from uh, Adam Back. He says, the hackers got Peter Schiff too. Uh, someone with a blue check mark asked him to post. And here's the quote. Uh, Peter Schiff says he's feeling generous and he'll double any gold bullion sent to Schiff Gold in the next hour. Carefully package your gold and buy the appropriate amount of insurance. And here's where you can ship your gold to. <laughs> so funny to see uh, Peter Schiff, anti-Bitcoiner, uh, trolled there uh, by Adam Back, a legendary Bitcoiner. Uh, militarized federal agents from a patchwork of outside agencies have been, begun policing Portland in rented minivans without the explicit approval of the mayor, state, or local 
municipalities. This is what this looks like in practice. Uh, these random army-looking men show up to arrest this well-dressed protester. Uh, the protester is surrendering, but who are they surrendering to? Random military men on the streets of Portland, Oregon. Things are not safe, and it's getting worse. Uh, shout out to Zianis Verafakis. Uh, he said he received the open letter from Ben, and he'll reply in due course. He's very busy with other papers and so on and so forth, but respect to him uh, for talking to the Internet and having this discussion with us. Uh, I hope that his opinion on Bitcoin's gotten better, but generally I, I'm just glad that he's talking, that he's having a discussion, and we're going back and forth. And uh, if he brings up good points on how Bitcoin could be improved, uh, I hope we'll listen to them and improve Bitcoin. Uh, it's great to have this conversation. It's really neat. Lots more people talking about the Twitter in incident. Uh, Jack says it was a tough day for them at Twitter. They feel terrible that this has happened. They're diagnosing and will share everything they have when they have a more complete understanding of exactly what happened. And he sends love to his teammates working hard to make this right. Good job, Jack. California shatters coronavirus record with 11,000 new corona cases in one day. So, yes, let's reopen the schools. Get those schools open immediately. Get back into the water. There's no shark in the water. And i uh, got a personal story here. Uh, I've joined the VR revolution. Uh, give me a little chance to figure it out before we start going to VR chats and maybe having some VR chats of our own right here on the World Crypto Network. Maybe we'll get Ben uh, to join us in VR. That sounds fun. Uh, but I went ahead and purchased the Oculus Quest. Uh, they're a bit hard to find right now. They're sold out on Amazon and other places. Uh, I found this one over at Newegg, uh, the computer company. Uh, it's funny. I think they shipped me parts <laughs> 20 years ago or something. And they, they kept my account open. It was still there. Uh, but you can get it at Newegg or eBay or maybe Walmart. Uh, it's around $500 for the 128-gig version. Uh, for around $400, you can get the 64-gig version, which apparently is just fine. Uh, you would just have to load uh, your apps on and off. Uh, so if it's hard for you to download things, uh, maybe easier to get the big version. Or if you just don't like loading things off and on, you think you're going to have a lot of software, uh, you might just want to buy the big one. But that's the only difference. Uh, this is the new one that doesn't need a computer. Uh, there's two versions. There's the Oculus Go, uh, which is around $200 to $300. It's kind of the entry-level VR to get people excited about this. This is kind of the second entry-level VR. It's still certainly not as good as a Vive or a real Oculus, uh, but those have to be plugged into a big gaming computer, and they also have to have little stands around the room with the sensors on them. Uh, this uh, works like magic, right? I don't know how it works, but uh, you just plug it in and it works. It has a little processor in the headset uh, that handles things, and somehow it can track the controllers uh, without the need for those sensors. Uh, so it's really cool, really easy setup, a uh, good way to try out VR. I don't have that much to say about it so far. I played it for like an hour. Uh, I only have a couple of games so far I haven't bought all the games yet, but I got this cool one called Wander. It was on sale yesterday for like seven bucks instead of ten bucks. And it's kind of like a Google Earth or a Google Street View simulator. And I was able to travel all around the world, which is something we can't do right now, and uh, take a look at some tourist sites. It's pretty cool. At first, I went to ones I'd been to, and uh, it was cool because it was kind of like, whoa, that's the place I went. You know, this is true. I figured it <laughs> confirmed. <laughs> Street View is real. Um, then I went to the Great Pyramids. And, uh, whoa, it was really cool. And, uh, yeah, the same game with Street View. You can definitely do that now. You don't need VR. Um, but it was kind of cool to be in the Street View where you look around and there's a pyramid behind you and you look over there and a guy's selling trinkets and I wanted to buy those trinkets so bad. And there's a camel. There was like two or three camels near the shot. Uh, so it was really cool stuff. And I'm, I'm excited about the future of VR. I think it's finally got affordable and that's got reasonable, and more importantly, 
Uh, if you're stuck inside and if you're planning to stay inside um, and you've, you've already sorted everything and you've already done all your like at home tasks that you never thought you'd do, uh, maybe it's a great time to get into VR. <laughs> We're stuck at home now. Uh, so I'm, I'm supporting this idea. And uh, hey, if you guys are into it, uh, check it out. Get the VR rig. Uh, hopefully we'll be doing those VR chats soon uh, when I figure them out. Uh, give me a, give me a week or two to figure this thing out. But um, And you guys can join that. They also say you can join the VR chats with just a computer, so you don't need to do that. But I always thought it was kind of elitist, kind of classist. Um, but now I'm part of the elites, so yeah, still it's still elitist and classist, but uh, I just joined them. So what are you going to do? I'm stuck here. I'm not going anywhere. So um, that's about it. I think we made it through the news. Uh, they put a mask on the uh, Lady Liberty, Liberty statue here in Las Vegas. Uh, it's pretty cool. It says Vegas safely. Uh, it's a nice, nice of them to try. Uh, Las Vegas locally has figured it out. He's got it. There's no Vegas economy with hospitals full of sick and dying people. Nobody is going on vacation to a pandemic hotspot. And that's why the casinos should have required masks in the first place. They did this incredible move, and all of this stuff's going to be studied afterwards. And the, the main thing that the people studying it are not going to be able to understand is just how are we so stupid? Uh, are really? Because, yeah, this Vegas thing, it was beautiful. Um, all of the dealers, all of the workers, the cocktail waitresses, all the pit bosses, all the people that work in the casino, they all wore masks. Good on them, right? Shout out. Excellent stuff. Uh, but as we know, that only means that they were protecting their guests. Their guests who are on vacation, you know, they're on vacation to be hedonist and to be out of control and crazy. And it's what the Vegas is, right? I'm not, not denying that. But uh, on their hedonist vacation where they were gambling and going all out of control, by not wearing masks, they could infect all of these workers who were there trying to, you know, earn money and pay their family and rent and stuff, you know. So it just made no sense. It just completely made no sense. The same thing with the movie theaters for a while there, when the movie theaters were saying, ah, we're not going to require masks, which just meant I was never, ever going to go to a movie again. It was sad. You have to have masks on both people. We're all connected, right? All the molecules, there's nothing between my face and your face but a bunch of molecules. There is no space there's no empty space right everything is full of something space is interesting too but that's a complex issue but yes why didn't we just require masks and save lives on both sides it's because it became a political issue because these people got it in their heads that it's their their right to infect other people even the non-aggression principle doesn't stand for that you don't have the right to hurt other people that's not within your rights. But yep, that's what they chose, and that's where we are. And we're still in the middle of this, and it seems like it's never-ending. You might be going a little crazy, and you might want to go outside. It's not worth it. You just feel sick all the time. You get super paranoid about being sick all the time. You worry about when they're going to come and stick one of those things in your nose or a tube down your neck. At worst case scenario. You hear the stories about the people losing their sense of smell and taste and that person stomping on their lungs, not being able to breathe, not being able to go upstairs. It is a consummation devoutly to be avoided, <laughs> right? <laughs> Something to stay away from. And maybe it's a good time to get that VR and just stay home. Then the governor of Georgia banned cities from mandating masks, which is, again, just uh, to bring back the Jaws metaphor. Uh, he said that every city can no longer close the beaches. You can't close the beaches anymore. You have to send the people out there to die. And maybe we'll find out later uh, what kind of dirt they had on Governor Kemp uh, that he would make this decision. I'm, I'm assuming uh, the best out of him. I'm assuming that he was blackmailed. I'm assuming that this uh, terrible decision was influenced from the outside. Maybe he was just paid. Maybe he wasn't blackmailed. He was 
different sides there. So there's force and there's not force. Or maybe he's just completely ignorant. I don't know. Uh, but it's stunning. And it's very sad for the people of Georgia. Uh, this guy was the Secretary of State. He stole the election. And normally that means he gets to, you know, pass some laws, steal some money, stuff like that. Uh, but in this case, uh, he's actually going to be killing people with his bad decisions. He's going to be going after Mao. Uh, we're going to have to do percentages because the Chinese population loss was so great. Uh, but we will be able to compare the percentages of what percentage of his people that Mao killed uh, versus what percentage of his own people did Governor Brian Kemp kill as compared to what percentage of his own people did President Donald Trump kill. Uh, so uh, obviously numbers-wise, you're not going to beat Mao. But percentage-wise, they got a chance. So we'll have to see how that goes. Uh, we talked about this. I read some of these tweets already uh, earlier in the show. Uh, shout out to Casey Neistat, not a political guy, classic YouTuber. He's been making YouTube videos since the iMac. Very cool guy. Uh, he says, I don't understand. And, and that's a great statement. So true. Uh, Kemp bans cities and counties from mandating masks. It, it should read the other way. Uh, he should be enforcing this. He should be saying cities and counties must mandate masks. Texas did it at this point. Like people are starting to figure it out, and it's amazing to have been through this whole mask roller coaster. You can go back uh, to January and February. You can watch our old shows. Uh, originally, uh, I believed what the people were telling me about the masks. I said, "Well, they're saying that masks don't work. Uh, I don't, you know, I don't know anything about this virus. I'm hitting the ground running. I'm going to learn everything I can about the virus." But in the beginning, we just didn't know that much. Uh, and I talked to my friend online who's from Hong Kong. And he was promoting masks. He was promoting masks so much uh, that he opened his own website called wearafuckingmask.com, right? And it's still up, it's still there. It's great stuff. And, and I asked him, I'm like, hey, man, you know, I, I don't get this. I'm, I'm new to studying, you know, these viruses and these diseases and things. Uh, what's the deal with the masks? And he said basically that in Asia they'd had so many of these, like the SARS outbreak and the bird flu and the H1N1 and all of these, the swine flu, all of these things just keep happening. Because uh, there's so many people packed in over there. It's a very tight society. It's easier for a virus to spread the more people are tightly together. And he said that, yeah, what, what they have done in each one of those scenarios and in the general common cold scenario is gone instantly to wearing masks. And he sent me a couple of studies um, about how just a piece of uh, cloth or a T-shirt or anything uh, is better than nothing. Right? The idea that we've been giving is that wearing a mask was the same as nothing. Right, So if it's the same as nothing, why bother doing it? Right, I get that. But the more and more that I studied and the more and more I read about this, uh, the more and more I thought, no, no, it's, it's not nothing. Like a mask won't, sadly, a mask won't protect you from getting the virus, but a mask will stop you from spreading the virus, uh, which is a huge part of this. And, and I watched as the Asian countries masked up and killed the virus. And I watched in horror as America didn't. And every day on this show, I would tell you to wear a fucking mask. Sometimes I didn't say the F word because it's more palatable to people. But you want to have a, uh, you know, something that shocks you out of this. Like, because you should wake up and say, hey, a piece of cloth could protect other people's lives. That seems pretty easy to do. Uh, although they have said more studies that the bandana masks are the most worthless. So if you want to spread the virus, uh, wear a bandana uh, because it's just like not wearing a mask. It's just not significant. Um, but again, we didn't know that in the initial time and we know it now. And even then, a bandana is probably better than nothing, but still not very effective. You have to look at the percentages, right? You have to deeply study the issue. But uh, And then it was only it was really only Balaji and several other, other of the Silicon Valley crew uh, that were out there, they'd gotten yelled at for that article where they didn't want to shake hands anymore, uh, but they were actually completely right on that, and they were completely right on the masks too uh, from the beginning here. Uh, ever since I learned that, I've been telling you uh, to wear masks, and, and now in America, just as we're about to solve this thing, just as we're about to figure it out and everyone put on the masks, Georgia governor actually bans counties. He actually overturns regulations. He makes it weaker 
It makes it more unsafe for the people of Georgia. Unbelievable. Again, all, all we can do, I can't, I can't influence Georgia at all. I don't know anybody that lives there, and I don't know the governor or any of these people. But all we can do is watch them die. Like I, I can send out a message like this, but they're not listening. And you know, more important people from other channels and whatever, they can send out their own messages and they can try to reach these people. Uh, but sadly, the only thing that's going to reach them is death and virus. And hopefully they'll learn quickly. Hopefully it won't take too much, but even then, it's the kind of thing, by the time it's already there, it's too late to do anything. Uh, the classic quote is that you, you close the barn door after the horses have gone, right? And it's even worse when those horses are out spreading a communicable disease, right? Much, much worse. Mayor Van Johnson, mayor of Savannah, Georgia. Uh, apparently a beautiful place, fantastic um, plantations, old houses, good country. Uh, I've never been to the South. I, I wouldn't mind going. Uh, obviously, I would think of the history first, uh, so it's tough for me to separate that. Uh, just as when I went to Berlin, uh, I was very much uh, caught up in, in what had happened there. And uh, there were all, actually a lot of reminders and, and remembrances, especially the really incredible in the uh, the downtown of Berlin there. I, I don't know the neighborhood, but they have this um, memorial to the, the fallen uh, the fallen Jewish people during the Holocaust. And um, it's just these big cement blocks. And it's just row after row of cement blocks, like kind of representing people and families and all these, these people that were lost. And you walk through the blocks and just something about the repetition of these blocks. It's not even the, the actual number of, of them because it would be much bigger and, and much worse. Uh, but just seeing it, just you know, block after block and the sunshine and the sunshine's blocked and the shadow and sun, shade, sun, shade, block, death, block, death, sun, shade. And it's just a powerful memorial. But maybe we'll, maybe we'll have one here too in, in Savannah, Georgia in a few years. As Mayor Van Johnson said, it is officially official. Governor Kemp does not give a damn about us. Every man and woman is for himself or herself. Ignore the science and survive the best you can. In Savannah, he says they will continue to keep the faith and follow the science. Masks will continue to be available. Uh, which is a nice statement and I like it. Uh, but if I was mayor of Savannah, I would go one further and I would say that we are going to continue to require masks and that we're going to challenge uh, this ridiculous uh, statement by the governor, this ridiculous proclamation, whatever it is, and that we're going to fight it in court. Uh, that's what I would say. And we don't know that they're not doing that in Savannah, but I would tell them. I would tell them to. Amy Siskind writes, Brian Kemp is sick as fuck. He is 101% going against science and what is best for the people living in his own damn state. This is beyond reprehensible. And again, there's nothing we can do. We're just going to watch Georgia die. Uh, shout out to Christopher Bouzet. He says, Twitter isn't just another social network. Heads of states and CEOs use Twitter to communicate. Anyone with high-level access to certain tools should be incorruptible. This hack could have easily been used to tank global markets. I agree with that. It also could have been used to start wars. Uh, Twitter is a much more important service uh, than their stock price or their programmers or their leaders or anyone seems to realize. It's valuable beyond that, and it should be a public utility. It should be just a way to communicate. Uh, but, you know, like we said, with the startups and everything, they got ahead of the Internet people. And with everything else that has happened, uh, clearly this is the injustice that you'd want to focus on, not uh, George Floyd uh, murdered in the street, not anything like that. But Trump is intervening in the case of the Missouri Mansion couple who pointed guns with fingers on the triggers at protesters who were walking by their house. Yes, the protesters were on the common land of the, of the housing development that these people live in, uh, nice and rich as it is, 
Uh, they don't own all the common land, and you can't just point assault rifles at people with your finger on the trigger and say that you're not threatening them. You're threatening them. That's assault. So we'll see how this goes now that Trump is intervening in the case. Maybe he can pardon them too. Oh, yeah, we didn't talk about it very much, but as predicted on this show, Trump commuted the sentence of Roger Stone. Roger Stone, go watch the movie. Get me Roger Stone. It's a fantastic documentary from 2017. You'll learn everything about Roger Stone, and you'll be horrified that his sentence was commuted, but you'll know why. Uh, when someone knows where all the bodies are buried, you have to pay them. You have to keep them out of jail. They could tell everyone where all the bodies are. Uh, as we predicted and as has been discussed here before, it was an inside job. Uh, they're saying now that yesterday's Twitter hack was a coordinated social engineering attack. A Twitter employee helped the hackers by giving them access to internal systems and tools. Imagine what kind of havoc this could cause to exchanges with Bitcoin. Yes, it just can't trust anybody. And here it is from Larry Cmac at Lawmaster on Twitter. Uh, check it out. He's got a great compilation of uh, all of the accounts that were hacked. And what's interesting here is he also has the times. Uh, so we can see right here at 8.16 p.m., uh, Angelo BTC was hacked. Uh, this is when I started to hear about the story uh, from Crypto Cobain. Uh, then it spreads out. Uh, to crypto exchanges. Clearly, they have a list of important people here, and they're going to go through them. But what I want to draw your attention to here is the time. Uh, this is a computer program. Uh, this could be automated. This should just be 816, 816, 816, 817. Uh, there's no reason for it to take this long. But as you can see, instead, 816, 913, 926, 928, 935, 940. So it's taking them maybe five to 10 minutes for each new account uh, that they're hacking. And they're not really changing the message. It's not like they had a special message here uh, for CZ Binance and it says, hey, funds are safe food, donate here. Or Justin Sun, I just had lunch with Warren Buffett, donate here. Uh, they use the same generic message over and over again, um, but uh, they actually have to go in and hack the accounts. They didn't have many people working with them. They couldn't automate it, something like that. Uh, really made me think uh, that it was an inside job or that they controlled that inside tool. Uh, but you can see it rolls out. Uh, Binance, CZ from Binance, their CEO, Gemini Trading, Coinbase, QCoin, Coindesk, Justin Sun from Tron, the Tron Foundation, Charlie Lee from Litecoin, the Bitcoin account itself, uh, Bitfinex, Ripple. Uh, this is where it gets interesting. They exit the crypto exchanges and a lot of people said, hey, maybe Ripple. Oh, look, yeah, they are taking Ripple. Ripple might have put this up on their own. <laughs> We're giving 2,000 Ripple back to ad other addresses. Every other one is the Bitcoin address but the Ripple one. A lot of people were saying this early on. They're saying, yeah, you should just put up that you're hacked. Uh, I was definitely thinking about it. It would have been kind of fun to get your name included in this list uh, with Bill Gates and Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos and Warren Buffett. But, uh, uh, but yeah, you can see then they go kind of general uh, hacking technology people, Elon Musk, Bill Gates, Uber, Apple, Kanye West. They break into celebrities here. Uh, then Bezos, Mike Bloomberg, Elon Musk a second time. He's important. Uh, they hack Joe Biden, presidential nominee uh, candidate. Uh, Warren Buffett, a uh, famous inventor, is, investor was hacked. Wiz Khalifa, a musician, rapper. Uh, Elon Musk a third time. <laughs> People, they must have really believed that Elon uh, would you know, convince people to send him money because he's so crazy he'd likely do this. Uh, then they hacked former President Barack Obama, Mr. Beast, a uh, famous YouTuber. He's a good guy. Uh, Floyd Mayweather, the boxer. Uh, they go Kanye's account again. And then, uh, I don't know this, uh, XX extension. And then finally, Kim Kardashian West, at least according to this graphic, was the last person hacked. Uh, so an interesting list, an interesting hack. And uh, we're going to learn a lot more about it today uh, because it just happened yesterday. So. Again, shout out to Larry C. Mac at Lawmaster for putting that graphic together. It's good stuff.
All right. Uh, Virginia, in the opposite of Georgia, has become the first state in the nation to adopt enforceable workplace safety standards for COVID-19. Workers should not have to sacrifice their health and safety to earn a living, especially during a pandemic. So good on Virginia. Uh, this is the right way to go. Now it's required. Now all of the workplaces have to do it, uh, whereas what they did in Georgia is actually making it worse. Interesting shout out here to a classic movie, Cube, from 1997. It's uh, all about these people being trapped in a cube. It mainly takes place uh, on the same set. Uh, you can see here uh, they did a frame analysis of every 17 seconds, and uh, you can see the way that the colors of the different cubes are used and how even though they only have one set, uh, they still made a visually interesting and engrossing kind of sci-fi horror movie. Uh, so check out Cube. It was an interesting film back in the day. Uh, there's another officer in New York City. He's messing with a homeless man, and then he just starts pounding on him. Of course, the police claim that the homeless man threw a punch at him. Uh, we can see the homeless man is trying to defend himself here, maybe moving the hand away. So you can see right there, he, he kind of swipes the hand away from the police officer, says, you know, don't touch me, don't put your hand on me, and to which the officer just goes like full-on Rocky at him, just pounding on the guy. I don't know how this is acceptable. Like, it's, it's such a crisis, we have to get him off that train that we have to pound on him. So... I don't know why they keep doing this. Also, the officer seems completely overweight. That might just be a bulletproof vest or something. I agree with Andrew Yang. They said the other day, Andrew Yang said, every officer should be at least a purple belt in jujitsu or judo or aikido or anything, any kind of martial arts. Maybe they wouldn't feel so threatened here uh, that they have to go all rocky on this poor homeless guy and just beat him. So... That was in Manhattan. Uh, they claimed injury was swelling to the cop's fist. Uh, he was charged with violent felony assault. So the homeless man was charged with violent assault uh, for that right there, trying to remove his hand. And he was also beaten, punched several times in the face. So it just keeps happening. And uh, who is the United States sending their COVID data to instead of the Center for Disease Control? We're sending it to this guy, Caputo. He moved to Russia in 1994 after the fall of the Soviet Union and was an advisor to Boris Yeltsin. He worked for Gazprom Media in 2000, where he worked on improving the image of Vladimir Putin in the U.S. And now we can trust him with the COVID-19 data. That's going to go great. Disturbing memo reveals that Trump's USPS chief has slowed delivery on purpose amid calls to expand voting by mail. Yes, they sent him in to destroy the post office, the service that helps people in rural areas, the places that voted for Trump, the service that is a government service. That's why it serves rural areas. There's no profit out there. And uh, yeah, it's just great. Things are great. This is what political cartoons look like in Canada today. Uh, you can see the Canadian beaver here is uh, building a wall to keep the United States out. You can see the red hats, the Confederate flag, and lots of little coronaviruses. Uh, that's what we look like uh, to Canada, our neighbor. Used to be our friend. Uh, Vitalik finally said something smart on Twitter, just to show if you just keep... Keep trying at it. You'll hit it eventually. He says, centralized back doors are awesome and help keep society safe. Yes, the same argument that people are saying for encryption back doors is the same as the Twitter back door. The Twitter back door allowed access to their employee. It was supposed to be all safe. Then their employee went rogue. What if that happened with encryption? Why, you could read everything. You could read everybody's mail and bank statements. Wow, that would be great. Oh, we need backdoors and encryption today. I also agree with Plan B. He says mainstream media coverage of this hack and the private breach, privacy breach is Bitcoin scam, Bitcoin scam, Bitcoin scam. Uh, but really, it's Twitter that got hacked. Twitter is being scammed. 
Trump is uh, slowing the testing down, slowing the ballot delivery down, and destroying America any way that he can. It's almost as if he works for another country who's opposed to America and trying to destroy it from the inside. It's okay. In five to ten years, that'll be normalized information like the fact that the Iraq war uh, was started on false intelligence. Sure, I was there screaming at the TV live when Colin, when Colin Powell was threatening the United Nation with a vial of water. And I said, that's a prop. You don't need that. And if these mobile weapon laboratories are on trains, why don't we just follow the train tracks, right? We don't need to invade a country to follow train tracks. We can do that from space. It didn't make any sense at the time, and neither does this. But it's okay. We can wait, and in five to ten years, you can read the information about it, and we'll, we'll go back and find this, and we'll say, wow, we knew about this then. Why didn't you? Another shout-out to Larry, my friend Larry Salibra, who made the website wearafuckingmask.com. You can even see in his little Twitter graphic, it says wear a fucking mask. Uh, apparently, Apple's built-in symbols font, SF Symbols, has four built-in Bitcoin signal symbols. How cool is that? They have Bitcoin Circle, Bitcoin Circle filled in, Bitcoin Square, and Bitcoin Square filled in. Very cool, right there in the symbols font on Apple. Uh, they don't seem to have an Ethereum logo or a Ripple logo. Shout out to Alistair Mill, who was, remind us of Nick Scabo's fashion classic statement trusted third parties are security holes i think a lot of people have said that though but we all agree and uh cz says that it was a privilege to be hacked before elon musk and bill gates <laughs> so i don't know about that uh, but it was a privilege uh, four states are now sharing driver's license information with the U.S. government so that the U.S. government can figure out the U.S. citizenship status of every adult living in this country. Uh, that's why we had separations between these systems. Uh, the driver's license was intended to give you the permission to drive. It was not intended to determine your citizenship status, and it was also not meant to be shared with the national government. We're seeing this change more and more, especially with the real ID, uh, the first time that Americans will have the German papers, please, pushed upon them with a national ID card. So, yes, it's happening now. And thanks to Iowa, South Carolina, South Dakota, and Nebraska, uh, if you live there, you just had your driver's license and state ID information shared with the government so they could find out if you're a citizen. That's not what you gave that information to the government for. They don't care. Maryland Governor Larry Hogan describes how Trump was totally useless on the coronavirus threat, forcing him to rely on his Korean immigrant wife to coordinate with the South Korean government to help Maryland fight the virus. He's a, he's a GOP governor. He's a right winger and still couldn't get any help from Trump had to use his wife and her knowledge of language and connections to talk to the South Korean government to get help from Maryland. Unbelievable. The GOP Senator Tillis from North Carolina is blaming the Hispanic population for their COVID surge. He says he's not a scientist and he's not a statistician before becoming a horrible racist and an idiot. North Carolina, your senator, Tom Tillis, is blaming the other. That's right. It's a classic case that's been done in countries all over the world. You blame the powerless other for your problems. Sure, it's not the problems of the senators or the governors who didn't lock down their state, who didn't require masks. It's the other the other has damaged us. Yes, the other. I agree with Sasha here. He says the hacker could have started World War III. Instead, he scammed people out of 2.5 Bitcoin. Twitter obviously needs to restrict access to this tool and maybe remove the tool altogether. It's very dangerous. 
Shout out to our friend Jack Mahler over at Zap. Uh, Zap has secretly raised $3.5 million from the unicorn maker behind Robinhood and Stripe to expand Bitcoin payments. Uh, maybe that's why the software works so well. They have money. Uh, you can check out Lightning Strike, uh, the new software by Zap. Uh, it's called Strike. It's on the Apple App Store. You have to get the test flight uh, software first because it's a beta version. Uh, but I was very easily able to buy Lightning directly with Strike and then send it to Fold to purchase a gift card. Uh, it was pretty amazing. I sent the leftover Satoshis to the wallet of Satoshi. It's a very cool Lightning wallet you can get on your iPhone, and it's very simple to use. And it was really cool. I don't know anything about payment channels. I never opened a payment channel. I never balanced one. I don't know anything about it. I just used the Lightning Network to pay for things. Uh, so it was pretty cool, thanks to Zap and Strike. Andy Slavitt on Twitter says, Trump says we should stop testing, is hiding hospitalization numbers, and is casting doubt on deaths. deaths. It's simply the USSR and Chernobyl playbook. Yes, they denied it, they denied it, they denied it, and it got worse and worse and worse. Because they denied it. Just like China early on in the virus, trying to hide it from people, hurting the entire world. They should have thought of that song, Lean On Me, and they should have asked the rest of the world to help them when they were in bad times, instead of lying about it and making it worse for everyone. Just like now. Nearly one-third of children's tested positive for COVID in Florida but Governor DeSantis is insisting that teachers are safe and schools must reopen. We'll find out later if they were bribed, if they were blackmailed, if they were coerced, or if they just wanted to kill people. Uh, but it's a bad look. It's an argument of time, that we don't have enough time and we need to make more money, so we have to do this thing. Uh, but I don't think that's valid. I don't think it's a valid argument, and I don't think that it's going to help us deal with the crisis that's about to come. But that's okay. I'm going to stay, stay here and stay inside. Uh, Facebook continues to spread voting information. Nearly half of all top-performing posts that mentioned vote by mail were false or misleading. So, Facebook, yes, you may be an open public platform, but as we all know, Open platforms are more likely to be manipulated by organized groups. Organized groups, whether funded by governments or corporations, can come in and manipulate your open platform while your normal users don't have this ability. Your normal users post one or two posts. They don't have any power. It's these manipulation that's the problem. That's why you have to protect your platform. An open platform quickly becomes 4chan. It becomes you know, vile and disgusting. Uh, we've seen it over and over again. But Facebook says, no, don't regulate us. They're just trying to make more money before things finally close down. Mail deliveries in the United States could be delayed by a day or more under cost-cutting being imposed by the new Postmaster General. The plan eliminates overtime for hundreds of thousands of postal workers just dark, man. It's not what the, the post office is a government service. We've been over this. They, they're serving rural communities where it's not profitable. So unless you want to cut off the rural communities and not serve them anymore and deny them of the government service of mail, which is actually mentioned in the Constitution, it's just dark, man. Just to, just to ruin the election. Dan Gilmore, legendary journalist, writes, part of a campaign to destroy the Postal Service so they can privatize the mail. Remember that when you vote, if you still can use the, the mails to vote by then, that is. Sebastian Bach from the band Skid Row said, If you support Donald Trump, you stand against rock and roll, and every musician in America who's ever been put out of work because a reality TV show host doesn't believe in science. A lot of people are shocked by this, expecting him to go the other way, but no. 
Skid Row is with science. Uh, Twitter had another interesting update to their service. Uh, again, they keep fixing the things that we care so much about. Um, they added this new line here. It says 3,321 retweets and comments. What a goofy line of text. Look how big it is. Look how, how long this is. Retweets and comments. And what I assume, again, they never give us any information about these updates, but I assume that they've started counting uh, comment retweets, where you re retweet something and maybe you say something, which is often something not in support or something in support. So it changes the thing that you're retweeting slightly. Uh, but they've included that in here. Now, it would have been a lot easier to say 3,000 RT slash comments or RT ampersand comments. Or it's also unclear if it's retweet comments here or if they've included replies in this as well because they often don't show the reply number now. But just a very strange thing for them to do, especially in contrast of Instagram and other services where they're thinking about uh, hiding this information because too many people are bandwagoning or too many people are you know, feeling good because their tweet got a 1,000 likes or whatever, and it would be better just to tweet it and let it go. You don't have to know that it got a 1,000, uh, stuff like this. So interesting to see Twitter uh, continuing to update the things that matter. <laughs> so retweets and comments. What a great giant word that is. And uh, the Lincoln Tunnel in New York City is flooding. So there you go, 2020. There's one more story for you about broken infrastructure in the United States. I want to give a shout out to New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, uh, who famously killed the plan to build new tunnels into New York City from New Jersey uh, because he said they didn't need them. The old tunnel is now leaking water. Uh, there's been a lot of discussion. People normally feel paranoid when they go in this tunnel anyway. A lot of people are saying, what would you do if it started leaking water? And a lot of them are like, I would just get out of my car and run. I forget this whole commuting to work thing and what a disaster for the tunnel. If multiple people did that, having to, I don't know what would they do, get a tow truck in there somehow and uh, tow them out of there. But yes, the Lincoln tunnel in the United States of America and New York city that goes under the water there is leaking. I think that's a, that's a good point to end on today. I think we made it through the news. That was pretty much the last thing. I remember, of course, I quoted to and linked to the article about Christie uh, killing the ARC tunnel project, uh, which would have been nice to have another uh, tunnel just in case the other one leaks. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, in, in Bristol, uh, England, yeah, they removed this statue. It had been up for 25 hours. It's of a protester. And they used to have a statue there of a slaver. He enslaved people for money. Uh, that statue was there for 125 years. So 125 years for a slaver statue, uh, 25 hours too much uh, for a protester statue. The MGM hack keeps getting worse here in Las Vegas. More than 200 million customers effective. Uh, plus, it sounds like they more got more data uh, than they originally said. It just keeps happening. Uh, it's verified now that the CDC dashboard is offline. No one's allowed to input data there or see the results of data. So we're now officially flying blind on the coronavirus. Uh, the data has disappeared. So now we truly know nothing. And so I think we're going to end the show here with the Black Lives protester statue in Bristol, England, uh, where it was, it was uh, in the public square for 25 hours and the slaver statue there was for 125 hours. So uh, things we talked about today in recap, please wear a mask if you go outside, if you're going to be dealing with other people. I feel sorry for the people of Georgia. And it's going to be sad to watch them get sick and for some of them to die. And I feel sorry for this whole country right now. Uh, we're trapped in a bubble. 
We can't get out of it. And we're stuck here. So if you're going to stay home like me till we get the vaccine, uh, VR is a good idea. Oculus Quest is pretty cool. Might be able to get by with the 64 gig version if you wanted. Or uh, if that's too much, try the Oculus Go. Uh, VR is here. Uh, I felt like when I put it on the other day, like I went to another place. Uh, when I took it off, I, I came back home. I was like, where did I go? And I went into VR, or as I'm going to start calling it, the ver. I went to the ver. Ver. So it's more fun than spelling out letters. But uh, thanks so much for joining us. Give us a thumbs up and a share. Uh, if you'd like to support the show, you could donate Bitcoin or Lightning at TallyCoin. Uh, you could buy a T-shirt at worldcryptonetwork.store. Uh, or you can just uh, thumbs up the show, give us a good review, retweet it, share it, that kind of thing. Uh, that really helps a lot. And uh, we'll try to keep these shows going. It's our goal to do the Bitcoin group again tomorrow, uh, especially with this great Twitter hack. <laughs> Although uh, uh, there's so many, so many hacks before, and we've talked about all of them, and it's always the same. It's not, it's not Bitcoin's fault. It's just Bitcoin adjacent. It's Bitcoin related. So uh, that's coming up tomorrow, uh, maybe around noon Pacific time. It's around 8 p.m. in England, 9 p.m. in Berlin. So uh, check that out and subscribe down below and all that jazz. And uh, until next time, bye-bye. <laughs>